I mean, this is by far the biggest selection we've ever had in uh, the UK extension. Um, uh, originally, we had about 50 candidates, a couple have pulled out since. However, there's still well over 40 45 50 candidates, which is more than double we've had for every previous election here. Um, so it's going to be really interesting. I mean, I'm not, you know, we had, the union had targets from the beginning of the year, um, 20 candidates for people running for the sabbatical positions, um, we've got over 25, over 50 people in total, um, and it seems to be catching, I mean we've had over a thousand votes already, the vote has been open just over a day, um, so people are really getting into it, and the fact that the atrium is so busy, um, means it's going to be uh, it's a good afternoon. Yeah, um, what have you done this year that's uh, different from the year, have you done anything? For elections or something like that? I said, look, we started planning it quite early on. We, um, we really thought about it and we looked at trying to bring it into the students' union. Last year, um, this happened down in Mitchell and Kenyon. For anyone who knows you, um, Mitchell and Kenyon's in the far end of campus. And it was only late on a Friday afternoon, so nobody really went. So we key was to get it back into the HU. Um, and I think it's well, there's definitely more people than last year's in that atmosphere. Um, and we tried to sort of talk to the candidates as often as possible. Who to be now? In the other candidates, we spoke to them all last week for our election settlement. We're speaking to some actual candidates during the week to see how the campaign is going. So there's really a lot we're doing to sort of try and publicise it as much as possible. And I think the campaign, the campaigning will be beginning shortly. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of, a lot of people have been out and about um, driving, talking. Um, how successful it is, I'm not sure. This is tends to be made for great time. Um, I said, if, you, if you if you do badly here, then it can really set you back. So if you, if you flap up here, then you've got a lot of ground to catch up on over the next week or so. So there's a lot riding on that one to two minutes big so. Yeah, and you and you need to know your manifesto inside out. You need to know so whatever question you get, 
and you can answer it fully and comfortably. Um, we will be going back soon to the, uh, to, the, to the stage where uh, the service students are going to be up first. Um, um, just my eyes standing up to see the returning officer. Yeah, he's in, um, but he seems to be waiting. What the hell happens? I don't know, but whenever he's ready, then. Well, then, uh, well, I'll, uh, I'll have a lot of him then, so we're all just a the return officer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, everybody, best of order, please. Okay, good afternoon. Thank you for everybody for attending Question Time 2012. We hope that this afternoon's debates will help you make a choice as to uh, which candidates in these elections you wish to support. Can I please ask that we maintain very good order during this debate um, and to make it absolutely clear because we don't want to repeat of incidents that we've happened in the past. Anybody who is physically or verbally abusive to any other person in this room will be ejected from the hustings and if they are a candidate, potentially excluded from the election. And if they are a campaign team member of a candidate, they run the risk of potentially ejecting their friend from the election. So please, best of order as we go through, this is about debating each other's policies in a fair and dignified way. Okay, I'm now going to hand over to Martin Dodd, our acting representation coordinator, who is going to go through the first of the election positions. Can I ask, while we're doing that, for the three candidates for women's officer, to please meet me over by the source door. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for coming. To begin with, we're going to be looking at the LGBT candidate. So can I ask Lauren McCleary, the LGBT candidate, to join us on stage? <laughs> Yeah, do you want to just... Okay, the way we'll do this is basically Lauren will have one minute to give a speech and then I will take one question from the audience. So Lauren, when you're ready, if you want to start, you have one minute. Okay, hi all, I'm Lauren McCleary and I have been on the LGBT Society Committee for the past year. So I've done a lot of campaigns and awareness for LGBT and I just want to do it on a wider scale now. I want to continue to work closely with the LGBT Committee and Societies. I think they are a fantastic support group for LGBT students here at UCLan. Um, the first campaign I ran as a, on LGBT Committee was What is LGBT? which showed me how few people know what LGBT is. So I want to make sure that we are visible here at UCLan so that people know who we are and what we're fighting for. Also, I think we are a massively diverse community and I want to make sure there is a wider form of representation for LGBT here and make sure that all LGBT voices are heard. So I have the knowledge and I have the passion for LGBT rights and I think that just makes it clearly easy who you should vote for. Okay, are there any questions from the floor for Lauren standing as LGBT rep? Nope, no questions, nothing at all? Okay, with that, can we give Lauren a round of applause and say thank you for giving your speech today? Okay, next, can I call Noella to the stage, please, for BME rep? Okay, Noella, same procedure as last time. You have one minute from now. Um, hi guys, my name is Noella Kibwe and I'm studying international journalism here at UCLan. And um, I am now running to be elected as your BME rep. Since my time here at UCLan, I've been very involved with the student union. In my first year, I was a part of the Afro-Caribbean Society and now I am communication officer and society forum leader. 
my main reason why I'm running to be elected is because I want to get more BME students involved in the student union and find out why they are not getting involved and see how we can change that. I haven't made any promises, but I've made some pledges, which are regular meetings to get people involved, supporting events such as Black History Month, campaigns and activities organized under the BME students. Thank you. Seconds. Ten seconds. No Ten seconds. Um, so basically, and I just want to liaise with local community groups and organizing loads of different things for BME students here at UCLan. So thank you. Okay, with that, can I ask the floor for any questions for Noella? Right. Hello, yep. there we go. Eureka, if you want to come over. Oh. Hi, my question is, um, what is it that you would do differently if I was the person who could your opposition? Um, one of the main things I will do differently is I want people to know that there is a BME rep. So I will attend meetings at the beginning of the year to try to speak to people and find out what I could do different to and like to see how they want to get involved and see the things that they want the SU to do for them. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you for Noella. If everyone can give a round of applause, please. Okay, um, as Gareth's not around, uh, the next position we're going to look at is women's officers. So could I ask all three candidates for women officer to join us on the stage to a round of applause, please? Okay, I'm just going to wait two seconds to confirm something with Gareth. Have you drawn lots? Yeah. yeah. Okay. To begin with, can I ask all candidates to introduce yourselves, please, to the crowd? Hi, I'm Homer Henny, and I wish to stand for Women's Officer. Homer Henny? It's Homer, yeah. Thanks. Hi, my name's Annabelle Lennon, and I'm standing for Women's Officer. Um, hello, I'm Chloe Bindon, and I'm also standing for Women's Officer. Okay, we'll be working in that order in terms of speeches. Huma, to begin with, you have one minute. Hi, um, I'm Huma Hanee, and I wish to represent all the female students in UCLan as women's officer. As Margaret Thatcher once said, you may have to fight a battle more than once to win it. I can promise to fight for your equality and rights until I succeed. Women's equality has developed largely over the past century, from jobs to voting. However, as it stands, it's still not equal between men and women. For example, I'm a law student, and I know my chances of becoming a judge are very, very slim. One, because um, I'm Asian, and two, because I'm a female. It's nothing racial, it's nothing um, to do with sexism. It's down to the fact that a typical judge is a white male. Um, it's inequalities like these that I wish to change. From hearing your views and opinions, I wish to debate your, po your points across to higher members of the council so that change may occur. I do not expect them to just listen and agree, it's not their jobs, but I can promise you that your voice will be heard. Vote for me and I will stand for your equality and your rights as previous women before me have stood. Thank you. Vote for me. Thank you, Huma. Annabelle, is it? Can you go next? Hi everyone, my name is Annabelle Lennon. I'm studying Forensic Science at Criminal Investigation. I'm a second year student. I stand here as a female and good at gender equality. Women are not speaking up on sexual harassment. 50% are not reporting cases because of victim blame. This university needs to take a zero tolerance approach to sexual harassment. This needs to be taken seriously and to be placed in practice for our university. Regarding campaigning, I wish to continue the campaign with Kissing Not a Contract because it highlights a key factor that, that, that victims should not get the blame. You don't get a murder and blame the victim. You don't get a robbery and blame the victim. But why we still blame the victims of sexual harassment? I tell you why. Because we still live in a gender equality world. I want change. I want responsibility to be taken by university. Our voice needs to be heard loud and clear. So vote Lennon for women to be taken seriously. 
Thank you, Annabelle. Okay, and finally, Chloe, you have one minute. Um, hello, as you know, I'm also standing for women's representative. I've spent the last two years working really heavily in student media, and I've learned a lot of skills there. So I've established a role within the union already, and I've proved that I can be hardworking and I'm reliable. I feel I'm suited to this role as I've elected. I'd endeavour to represent and be the voice of UCAN's female population. I'd aim to put weekly drop-in sessions into play, as I would be able to act as a mediator between the union, females, and whether they had any problems. I have referred to a policy. I brought up the issue of whether or not we needed a male representative. Concerns have been raised over this. So I feel it's important to bring it up. This has never been my main priority. I just feel I only raised the issue of whether or not council fairly represents all students. But now, upon reflection, because the majority don't feel this is right, I think if elected, it wouldn't be the best approach. But if anyone felt it was, they could always approach me. To conclude, my main aim is, and always has been, to represent you, country women. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. I'm now going to go to the floor for a question. There's no name on this, but it said, why have all women's rep candidates had minimal or no involvement with women's committee this year? That would probably be me. Where is, is, it, is it on? Right. If, each, if each of you can take it in turn, in, you'll get about 30 seconds to a minute to answer. Oh, okay, right. Okay, I've not been involved with women this year. I'm not going to lie there. I haven't been to any of the events or anything. But I've been involved in other societies only because I didn't really know that there was much going on for women there, right? I, I, if I could go back the year, I'd start over, join more committees, everything. I'm in the Islamic Society and I'm in several other. I want to join. I want to start up dance societies next year as well. Um, just because I haven't done that doesn't mean that I don't want to be your woman, your representative as a woman, right? I wish to stand for women's rights, and I know I will. I'm a bit of a feminist, I'm not going to lie to you all, but yeah. So vote for me, and I will stand for your rights. Annabelle? Okay. UCAN has over 32,000 students. If we were to halve this and say 50% of them students were female, this would be 16,000 students and only 30 women are part of the Women's Committee. We need to bring up the popularity of the Women's Committee and get more people involved. So this is one of my manifesto commitments to get it promoted, to get more people involved. We can't have 30 people out of 16,000 representing women. Thank you. And finally, Chloe. Um, I also admit I haven't been involved with the Women's Committee, but last week I spent some time with them and I found that they're a brilliant group of people and they worked very hard to raise awareness. As I've already previously mentioned, I've been involved in student media and we've published articles that are about female issues and the campaigns that they do. And I feel if you would let me to this role, I'd be able to carry on, continue and hopefully raise awareness of all females. Thank you. Okay. And time to go for a second and final question. What do candidates feel about the last 12 months of Women Committee campaigns? Again, if you want to take it in order. Um, the campaigns, what, inside the uni? I'm a bit confused by the question. Right. Um, with the campaigns, I managed to get, well, I got a leaflet last week. That's the first leaflet I've ever had from the women's um, thing. Maybe it's because I came to this area of the uni. But um, I feel that if I, if I was to be elected, I would make sure it was put up everywhere that this is happening for women's. I mean, it, I can't remember what the events were, but I know that whatever the events were, I'd like to upgrade it to a next level and make it so that everybody's involved, but women are running it. People know that women are running it, so that women can get a bigger um, place within the uni, and hence why, well, that's why I want to be a women's representative, show that women can do it. Annabelle? Hi. Um, Kiss is not a contract campaign was a really good campaign. Basically, I want to increase the awareness of this and to promote it even further towards the victim is not to blame. And if I was to get elected, I'd work with the Women's Committee to get more campaigns, more public, publicised within the university, to get more support and more back in. Thank you. Go. Thank you, Andrea. And finally, Chloe. Um, I'd say the most recent campaign that they've done really impressed me, that this is what a real woman looks like. I think we live in a world where everyone is obsessed with perfection, and I think they really proved that being a woman doesn't mean you have to fit what the media thinks you should.
Thank you, Chloe. And with that, can I thank all women's position candidates for coming up here and giving a speech? Okay, I am now going to hand over to... No, are we taking a break? Yeah, I can do. Okay, I'm next going to read a statement out on behalf of the um, disabled students candidate, Mike Gillum. So I will now read a statement. The largest disability group at UCLan is people with hearing problems, and yet very rarely our class colleagues advise on how best to work alongside them. It is unacceptable that the students with disabilities are made to feel isolated and uncomfortable in their class setting. I would also like to see lecturers incorporate in the three learning styles into their class to cater for the range of students. In this day and age, and with the resources available, it is not appropriate for lecturers only to teach audibly or with scrappy PowerPoints. There are simply, simple ways to better incorporate students with disabilities, but teachers need to be aware of these. Third and finally, I would like to see a greater number of students with disabilities involved with sports, societies, and to work alongside the committees to support them and advise them as they seek to extend their activities to these students. Apologies, I can't be with you today. I hope you'll vote for me as disabled students officer. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, and um, with that, I will take a five minute break. Is that what we're doing yet? Take a five minute break and we'll come back with council and then US delegate positions. So, we have a candidate for the LGBT rep and the DNA rep and also the women's rep there. I mentioned this committee as a member of this party. And I think it's it's um, it's been quite interesting to hear what they had to say. I think um, with the women's committee, they've done a lot. Well, they've done a lot. They've worked with a number of some candidates. Which they have been publicised. I think they've all got good intentions. And, but again, I can see the women's committee's opinions about queries about students getting uh, involved, especially the three people who are run. They're going to be you know, there. It's you know, it's a valid question. It's a challenging question about why they have been involved. It's a weird and certain amount of pause and how you think about it. Yeah, I think in that, in that situation, honesty is always the best policy. There's no point trying to say that you've been involved when you know when you haven't made all three you know, they haven't been involved as much as they have. Like, they've all picked up the sort of what the media have done and they all sort of some more than others, so in particular, so how much interest in them. I think some, some points, uh, I think one of the girls, the kind of points uh, seem to go down much better than the girls. Um, there's quite a varied range of subjects that uh, you're involved in, so I don't know if you're involved in science, uh, do you think the subject has any sort of bearing on the community on the community of the community of the I don't think so. Really. I think with um, with council, it's sort of pretty much uh, uh, it's based on what your, your passions and beliefs are rather than your actual course. You know, we know you can draw on experience from your course. I don't think you can actually sort of go out and use that as to, to push forward. All you've got to do is go and believe in what you think are the issues that need to be addressed. So, the women said, What is the issues that you know, surround women? And they talked about them. You know, no one up there has talked about their course yet, which is what is well, it was aiming at. Next is the um, is the open council. These are going to this is going to be far more contested because the council is going to go based on sort of what these two committees. Of course, the open council positions are there because they don't have a specific target for students, like disabled students. They've all got a clear fixed 
But I don't think so. We don't have that, so it's everyone. So it's a lot, like this could be driven a lot more by yours. Um, so I think that's going to be interesting to see what people have to say, how much they use they sort of back on their board. Some I think some have got ideas that um, don't fit into any any area. So it'll be interesting to see how they tackle it. And then council chair. Um, Council chair, again, you know, it's all about holding the the uh, spatters to account uh, again rather than the council. You see how it comes with the requires from the council chair needs to be uh, someone who can, you know, facilitate the council meetings by ensure that everyone can get them put across. And but also, uh, also ensure that the councillors can help challenge the spatters and hold them to account because that's Regardless of who we represent, at the end of the day, they're supposed to challenge the Savannah provinces, including myself. And, and so the chair needs to help, help do that. Um, it was quite a rare day for the community council. Um, and I think this was quite a different range of uh, sort of subjects. There's a couple of them there, there's a couple of them more interested in sport and the media. Um, I mean, does, does that help? Does that help? I mean, I think, I think maybe it can. I think some uh, have certain uh, sort of interesting places, in particular, there's a large number of students in the way. And if you're one by one, then maybe you've got a lot of people. Um, a lot of the other people think it's a from the council and come from uh, courses and popular courses that they and uh, members of existing societies. Yeah. Um, so they can use the support from that to help launch their, you know, their reasoning for standing their manifesto because even if their manifesto is not necessarily anything to do with the society, they can help with support. Um, but the hate ones, the hate people from the hate ones, uh, the hate ones, uh, the hate ones, the I would be surprised if they sort of wouldn't have issue. I think the student council needs to look at the whole debate center. That's something that's been built up at the student union's uh, annual meeting. A few years now, but they want to make more uh, to continue to push on getting the people to pay today. And of course, it's been improved by the speaker about uh, not being able to access the debate center. Yeah, and so I would say that will be on the manifest. I would have thought so. I mean, it's been, it's been a problem going back for years, even before these, uh, these students started here. Um, and it's not, I mean, there are other societies in these, but in particular, the Islamic society are the ones that we uh, know you both know about. But I said, a lot of the Islamic society, then there is other um, issues to begin to There's a lot of other religions, there's some about the whole group of sheep media, there's some about the university and the union. Um, and I think those two, uh, you'll find out in the next few minutes how much people are so sort of interested in that and want to sort how much it can tell you the of it. Um, so I think the even part, as I say, is there before the ownership comes in, so it will spring board to get you on. It helps get you know. Um, got, even if you're in question, even if you're not in a committee. And being in the society will help, or it will just be a group of students. I mean, it doesn't need to be like a student media or something like that. It can help get you uh, a group of students who can know you, who will know you, if they agree with you, they'll help you with the pain, they'll help you with the which will, you know, the only thing that, you know, saying that the elections are not on the lab, they just have a law who you know, who know you who can help support you and help you, then that's never going to be you here. Um, I don't know, are you involved in, what are you involved in before you became uh, a leader? Yeah, I, I, I didn't do that, so I didn't do that, so I just did Pluto. Pluto for two and a half years, and that, so that ground me, helped me get to a large number of people who could be. We need to campaign to steal around you. Because 
So, can you please give a round of applause as they come to the stage to um, Mohammed Ali Majid, <laughs> Kira Lynch, Rosanna Myers, Adam Legg, Will Ferris, Muntadar al Stephen Seymour, Alex Ray, Simon Saeed, and Josh Jenkinson. Yet, more observant amongst you will have noticed that three candidates have not been able to attend due to uh, lecture commitments. I have statements from two of them, and I will read their statements at the appropriate time in the locked drawer. So, the candidates have selected at random to go in this order, starting here and going down the line. Feels a bit like an interrogation, but... Um, so, we will start at this end with Majid, and it's one minute. I will cut you off at the end of the minute. Okay? Hi, um, my name's, uh, well, I said Majid, but, uh, yeah, my, people call me Maj for short. Everyone knows me around uni, especially with ISOC. I've been involved basically since I've been in uni. Um, basically, my intention is to represent a group of students which I don't feel are being completely represented, um, which are basically people who care about faith. Um, it doesn't mean it's necessary to say that the current council haven't taken this into account. Quite honestly, I think they've been brilliant um, with this current year. Um, I don't know how many of you actually there in the AGM were actually um, put count, um, a motion forward, which was basically to raise the awareness of the prayer facilities, for example, the, the multi-faith centre. Um, they, they don't actually... Um, provide for the needs of the students. I mean, there are so many flaws ranging from things such as um, disabled access, uh, opening hours, um, and uh, uh, fire facilities. But basically, I want to represent basically not just Muslim students, but also it's basically quite a lot of interfaith work coming up as well. So, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Kira Lynch. Okay. Um, hi, I'm, my name's Kira, and I'm first year studying a combined honor in fashion and media, and I won't be one of your student counselors. 
This year I've sat on council as a school and course rep and the experiences I've got through participating has made me more motivated to get further involved next year. I feel that I'm an active member in the union. I'm events organizer for the new RAG committee, fashion society secretary and assistant in surveys like the feedback campaign. I want to see the students union be used more, used more, what? Be used as more than just a shortcut, sorry about that. And the facilities are all there, but I've noticed a communication problem between the union and the students during my time here. And I feel that's led to a lack in a certain unity. <laughs> sorry. I think this problem can be massively improved by using PS to be more effectively in synergizing SU media. This could potentially benefit students' awareness and SU usage. I also intend on introducing more interactive charity fundraisers and other events. I have two seconds. I have a lot of ideas. I want to help provide opportunities for people. I'm nearly done with one sentence. Round of applause. <laughs> okay, I will now read a statement on behalf of Rosanna Myers. Hi, I'm Rosanna, and I'm currently in my second year of law here at UCLan. Although those of us already at UCLan won't be affected by the 9,000 fees, our fees have still gone up and we need to make sure we're getting the most out of our union. Students Council plays an important part in the union by helping to give students a voice. Having chaired a society last year and been treasurer this year, I know that many students want to have their views heard but don't know how to get them across or even who they can go to to put them forward on their behalf. I want to make sure the students are being heard at this crucial time in university life. I want to promote student council as a body and make sure that students are aware of what it is, who is on it, and what it can do for students. We need to make sure that we are being not just heard, but listened to as well. A vote for me is a vote for a bigger voice at UCLan. That statement's on behalf of Rosanna Myers. Okay, the next candidate is Adam Legg. Thanks, Mum. Um, hi, I'm Adam Legg. Um, that's where my notes finish. Um, I tried to write a speech over the last 24 hours, but I haven't quite managed it. Basically, I'm standing on green issues. Um, from those who have been at the university for longer than I have, we'll all know that it's a pretty green university. But I want this university to be even more green. I won't paint it. I just want to be proud of it. Um, so yeah, I'm standing on a green issues, and that's about it from me. So come rain or shine, vote Adam Leg for Student Council. Okay, thank you, Adam. Next candidate is Will Ferris. Hi, I'm Will, and I'm in my first year studying Forensic Science and Criminal Investigation. Uh, I'm not going to talk about what experiences I have, because this election isn't about me. It's how it's going to benefit you. I want to get students more involved with the union and also the council meetings that we currently have. I believe that it should be up to council members to approach you and listen to your policies and ideas. It's our job to bring them forward at the meeting, not for you to approach us. I don't think that students are being approached enough about their issues. If I get elected, I want to increase the student awareness of the services they can receive and from the students' union and how they can benefit students. I believe that more activities should be run within the union itself, although Oh, sorry. To allow and encourage students to join extracurricular activities, to get more students involved and allow them to enrich their CVs and build their confidence. Only you can make the change. You use our families to make your union an amazing one. Vote for who you think would be the best at the job and not who tells you to vote for them. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Will. Okay, the next candidate is Muntada Alriakapi otherwise known as Munti, and he is not able to be here, so therefore I have got a statement on his behalf. Hi, my name is Munti, and I am a third year pharmacy student, and I would like to run for one of the open positions. Firstly, I want to apologize for not being able to attend tonight. I tried to make arrangements, but they could not go my way, and I'm sorry. However, I am running to become the first faith rep here in UCLan. I feel there seems to be little attention paid to faith groups, and this is quite saddening on our part. I propose to make a change to this. By voting for me, you will be voting for a voice for the faith societies on the student council. I want to be that middleman to resolve any issues the societies may have with the students' union. I will look forward to hearing and proposals, and I will make sure that these will be received by the appropriate person who can take the right action. Finally, if you think having a person in the student council who can stand solely for the faith groups is as important as I believe it to be, then please vote for Muntada Arikabi. Thank you very much. 
Okay, the next candidate is Stephen Seymour. Hi, I'm Stephen. Um, I'm already a course rep and a school rep, and as, um, as such, I'm used to chatting with our students. Um, feedback is an issue I'm quite passionate about, and at the moment I'm quite involved with the Student Union's feedback campaign. This is just one of many issues I feel as a councillor I could help to change. I would also like to help get the students more involved and engaged with the Students' Union. I feel quite passionate about the fact that the Union does a huge amount for students and I want to let other students become aware of this. I feel by working as a counsellor I will be able to give them the opportunity to work alongside people who help change things within the University to benefit students but also give an impact for the current cohort of students. I have already had to do this on my student staff liaison meetings and at times had to talk about issues that the staff didn't really like, but I was there to speak on behalf of students and I'm not afraid to do this. And if I do get voted a uh, councillor, then I, am, I can assure you that I will fight for students' points and even if others don't agree. I'm not going to stand here and lie to you and tell you what I will do and won't do, but I will tell you this. I'll do anything you ask me to and put the views across that you want. Thanks. Cheers. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, the next candidate is Alex Ray. Hi, I'm Alex Ray, and over the past year I've worked as chair of the LGBT, running several campaigns from charity to LGBT rights. I'd like to continue my campaigning by joining student council and working for more awareness around the pressing issues, working closely with the LGBT rep and next year's campaign officer. Primarily, the, the issue I'd like to look into is the blood ban on gay men giving blood. As some of you may know, it's been recently changed from gay men not being able to give blood to them not be, being able to give blood if they've had sex within the past 12 months. This is a campaign called Donate, Don't Discriminate that I would like to promote within the, within the union. Aside from this, I'd like to do work around other health issues like the HPV virus in men. A lot of women are treated for cervical cancer um, because of HPV, whereas men are not given this treatment Please vote for me and vote for someone who'd like to make a difference in awareness within the union. Okay, and the last candidate that is here today or has issued a statement is Josh Jenkinson. Thanks. Uh, my name is Josh Jenkinson and I want to run for Student Council. Um, as a council, I believe that I can uh, help encourage students to get more involved with the Students' Union through volunteering which is a great way to get vital experience that a lot of employees uh, today are looking for. From my personal experience, I know this as well, of working with youth projects at home. Um, I also want to encourage voluntary work uh, in the Students' Union, become more involved in the Students' Union, but also in sports and club societies, but also with the local press and community. Uh, as well, um, an issue that has been raised when I've been around campaigning, people have been talking about um, cuts and changes to uh, the modules and their courses. And I want to work closely with course reps as well as the education officer about how we can uh, have students have more fair say about what happens to their courses. After all, we are paying for them. And it's our education. So my th point is there is uh, I want to put you into UCLan. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, thank you. That's all the candidates for open position. We will now take two questions in the same order. I will run along the line. So, Stefan, for the question. What experience do you have for the role? Um, well, first of all, can everyone hear me? Because I wasn't sure if I was holding the mic, mic too close. Yeah. Um, Okay, cool. Um, yeah, well, basically, I've been involved uh, with societies and uh, various committees since I was in school. Um, I've basically in charge of my own society and uh, when, when I was doing my GCSEs. I basically, since then, I've been involved with something, been involved with various interfaith work. And even now, kind of thing, I'm, I'm trying to make changes already. I, I'm, I've put a motion forward, which got passed. So I'm already making changes, regardless of being given a title or not. Okay. Like I already said, I've been on council this year and I've gained experience from that. And I'm also part of um, societies and the right committee. And if I have got to finish my speech, um, I want to create more events and more opportunities within these societies so that whenever you leave here with a degree, you leave here with more work and life experience. Okay, Adam. I have no council experience, but what I do have is team player experience. I've been a member of a club 
for nearly eight years playing as a team, I am on unofficial committees in uh, some of the societies that I'm in, and that's that's it basically. I'm a team player, and that's it. Um, I work in a home retail group at the minute, so basically, whenever I'm in work, that my whole point is helping people, making sure that any needs that they need met, I meet them. Um, I'm also planning to be an M&M mentor and an M&M wellbeing mentor. I've always thought that if we've got this help so far, why can't we give it back? We've always received it, so students at the minute who need help, we might as well give them it. Um, I currently sit on council alongside Kira as well, and um, I've been proactive with certain campaigns, like I mentioned, such as feedback. I've been on the street and I've talked to students and seen what they want, and I'm not afraid to do that. I'm also a school and course rep, so I'm used to doing it, and at the end of the day, shouldn't your council be there just to get your views back? As I've already said, over the past year, I've been running several campaigns of a different variety. And I've, I'm just wanting to continue them and take it a step further. Also, I've been on several uh, NUS training days, which has ha helped me know exactly how to work them. And my experience, as every day I campaign, I change my strategy because it's necessary and you learn what works. Uh, well, experience I've had is at school, I was on the uh, school council there as well through from about year 11 to year 13. As well, also with the uh, Future Youth Club, which is uh, in my hometown, I was also on the committee member for there. And also, uh, um, I've also been working with clubs and societies in the union as well, so that's my experience, and I believe I can bring all that to the uh, job as a student councillor. And the second question, this year there's very much been a them and us mentality, but how do you plan on building a partnership with the SAC? Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, um, th there are various interfaith events that have, all, well, uh, uh, that, that should be brought in. Um, even outside of faith, there's things such as um, charity as well, which I'm already encouraging with um, the student, uh, student um, affairs committee. So, uh, there's just basically just working with them. I mean, for example, um, Jack this year has brought in RAG. Um, so, I mean, it's just basically working alongside them and help support them with the various groups that we represent. Um, I would agree with that to an extent. I don't think that's necessarily anyone's fault. I think it is a lack of awareness. I know a lot of people who don't know who the SAC are. So, to improve that them and us mentality, I think the SAC next year should be a lot more public. There should be a lot no, like better known. And this can be improved through the media and through other events that should be created. And I would like to help out with that. I don't have a plan, but what I do have a plan is is for to have many green projects over the year. And I want to get everyone involved in that, not just the SAC, not just the committee. I just want to get everyone involved. So I think that bringing everyone together through these green projects is important. And uh, that's how I'll bring everyone together. <laughs> From being a campaign at the weekend, uh, just talking to loads of different people, seeing what their views are, I've noticed that hardly anyone knows what the SACs are. A lot of people didn't know what the students' union were, even though they weren't drinking on it. Um, basically, I want to work closely with the SACs, try and promote it more, get the students more involved. That way, they're going to come out with better education, they're going to know more about campaigns, and we'll just be able to have a better university life. I think your SACs do quite a lot for you, and I think a lot of that's misunderstood at times because there isn't a, there isn't any awareness for it. And um, I think the main thing is because their office is in the students' union, and a lot of, not a lot of people use it, doesn't mean that they're not working for you. I think that my plan will be basically to make students more aware because we all see it. So I think it's time that we helped you all see it too. A uh, lot of the main points have already been done as I'm the eighth person in the lot. Um, basically, the, the thing key to any relationship, in my opinion, is communication. And I think that if, if we can get a good communication between the students, we're really the bridge for that. And we, if we're on the council outreaching to the student community and t uh, making a dialogue between the two, I believe that would be the way to make everyone more aware. Um, basically, yeah, all the points basically, what everyone's just said before, is trying to work closer together to get people more involved with the students' union, but also the SACs, and break this mentality that it's them and us, which I think is the most important thing we need to do.
Okay. Okay, everybody, I'd like to, everybody to give a round of applause to the uh, candidates for the open position. Thank you very much. Okay, can I have the two candidates for chair of council, please? So, can we have Jason Smith and Hayley White? Okay, in time-honored fashion, we've uh, thrown a coin, and Hayley will speak first. One minute. Okay, hi guys. Um, my name's Hayley, and um, I'm running for chair of the Students' Council this year. Um, and the reason I've chosen to stand for the Students' Council, um, chair of the Students' Council, is because I feel very strongly about the views of other students and their opinions on how they would like their SU to be run. I believe that everyone is entitled to their own opinions, and therefore each person has a right to express their views freely. If I were to be elected of Chair of the Students' Council, I would ensure that the wishes and decisions of students would be taken seriously and always acknowledge each student's ideas. I want more people to be aware of the Students' Council, as after going around and talking to many students on campus, it is clear that not many students are aware of the Student Council and the way it is run and works. I want to make sure that all meetings are organised, beneficial and generally effective in the way they are coordinated in order to get the best results possible for each and every student study at UCLan. At the end of the day, the main thing is that you vote for the person you would most like to represent you. Thank you. Jason Smith. Afternoon. The role of the council chair is misunderstood. It's not about policies and it's not about having big ideas. That's what we elect full-time office for and part-time council members. The role of the chair is to hold the SAC and the council to account to make sure that they do the jobs properly. The chair also acts as a mediator to make sure everybody on council gets their say. Over this year, I've visited societies and sports meetings, I've attended multi-faith week, I've helped the American football team get started, and I even volunteered for one of the women's campaigns wearing a pink t-shirt, which is a bit odd. Before you choose who to vote for in these elections, think about one question. What have the candidates here done in their time to make your time at UCLan better? Whether I get elected to chair or not, I'm still going to be involved, and I'm going to work the same as I did before. It's my commitment to this union and the way that I go about things that make me the best credible candidate for this role. Thank you very much. I'm Jason Smith. Okay, thank you to both candidates. There will now be two questions. Do we have any questions already submitted? Right, I'll take two questions from the floor. <laughs> Stefan, do you want to go in the mic? Okay, if you'd like to ask a question, can you please put up your hand now? And Stefan will come round with a radio mic. Question for Chair of Council? Okay, over here. Um, what personal qualities do you believe you have that would make you best suited to the role? Hayley first. Um, Basically, I'm really approachable, I'm really friendly, um, and I'm someone who loves listening to people and loves taking on board things. Something that I've really enjoyed over the last week um, going out on campus is actually listening to people, and really, it's been really interesting to find out what people have got to say. Um, and yeah, I just love listening to people and love kind of taking people's opinions um, into account and doing something about it, really. So, yeah. Jason? Um, I'm organised. I'm a democracy geek. Um, I love the whole process. 
um, and I'm officious and self-confident enough to be able to stand up to the members of the SAC and tell them when they're not doing the job properly, which I've already done this year on several occasions, but we'll deal with it. They've done a great job and I think they should be applauded. Um, yeah, I just think I'm better suited to it. It's an experience thing. It's about experience and knowledge about the system and I think I've got that, so. Okay. okay. We have we have one more question allotted for this position. So has anybody got another question for the chair? Indeed. No questions? I'd like to thank both the candidates for uh, coming onto the stage and making their speeches and questions. Okay, can all the candidates for NUS delegates please go and meet me as usual by the source bar doors. Hello, um, welcome back to um, the lecture room. I'm here with um, the Dave Stubbins and uh, Rennie Edel Lodge, who's the SU president, has joined us. Um, so, what did you think for the last round? Uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, I was quite um, taken aback by a question that asked that they, there was a their, them and us mentality with the Student Affairs Committee because. Um, I think if there's one thing that we haven't been this year is been unapproachable. Um, and I'm a bit shocked to see candidates who I'm not really, don't really know so that they felt like they couldn't approach me or because I've never heard from them before. Well, that was one of the things I used to pick up on. I mean, um, is, is there anything that you could, um, is there anything that you could say as to why, you know, that this, um, someone felt like this? I don't know. I mean, I think that. It's, it's strange, isn't it? People say that they don't know where the SOC is or where the office is, etc, etc. But I mean, I, I was in to this job to represent students, um, not to go around telling people um, why I exist. And I think that the information is out there um, and it's up to students to find it. You know, at the beginning of Precious Week, each member of the SOC was in and out um, opening lecturers, introducing themselves to new students. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm a bit taken aback by that. And I don't think that there has been a them and us mentality this year, because whenever there's been a, whenever students had a particular issue, um, usually members of the Student Affairs Committee have gone over and above their uh, duty to iron that out. Um, so, to the student council chair, um, we have two very different personalities um, going for that. What do you make of that particular debate? I'll go to there first. Um, I think uh, uh, I mean, Jason's got the added experience of doing it for a year. And I think the way Jason came, Jason comes across as someone who he, he, he's used his experience in that speech, which he didn't have last year. So, Jason, is sort of, Jason dominates the stage, and he, you know, and that's sort of how he is as a person. I think um, where the difference from Haley, Haley sort of is more seems more reserved, quieter, um, and will sort of feed sort of opinion around. I think Jay, Jay, Jason talked about holding council, holding SAC to account. Haley talked about. Um, uh, Jason struck me as quite sort of militant, would be a very good sort of union leader. <laughs> It wasn't the Marines. Well, <laughs> but um, yeah, and Haley, um, Haley talked about listening and that. So it's very interesting to hear the different styles. What way people go for, I'm not sure. Um, I think Jason's certainly uh, more well known, but as I said, being known and having the loudest support doesn't always mean you're right or you're going to win. It might, you know, people might vote for Haley. It's, it's interesting to see what people want to do today because Jason. Where Jason comes across, so it makes you think, yes, you know, and it, you really can. He can. He's a very good speaker. He, you know, he speaks well, but Jason's got that added experience, I think. And I, I think that chairing a meeting is a very particular thing, and I think that um, a student often gets a really good understanding of how to chair a meeting by being involved in a society or being society chair. Um, as student union president this year, I've been, um, I chair all sorts of a manner of meetings, and yeah, it's, to some extent, it's about holding the student the first can need to account, but it's also making sure the meeting runs smoothly, everyone gets their say, and I quite like what Hayley Wright had to say about everyone having their say, etc, etc. But chairing the meeting is a very, um, you, you need to work out when the conversation is becoming irrelevant or when it's going around in circles, that sort of thing. So it'll be an interesting election.
um, there was quite a lot, um, there was quite a difference in the uh, election in the council candidates as well. There was quite a, a, a wide range of you know, faith candidates. And there was also three absentees. I mean, how is that going to affect them in the long run in this in this election? Then? Um, and, and is it if they've got lectures at, at this point in time? Is it fair that they can't make it? Or? At the end of the day, your education is your education. I don't think we can call them. It's good that they submit statements. But I know that two years ago when I was standing for women's representative, I wasn't able to att attend because I had months at the time. So I don't think it's something that should be held against a candidate if they're not attending. So they've got good reason. Yeah, I'd, I'd go along with that. You can't hold it against someone if they can't make it. Um, and the fact they've out the statements, the statements I thought were actually quite good. I quite enjoyed listening to them. Um, listening to the variety of reasons for people going for council is very, very interesting to hear different motives, different reasons, and so different experience. So then, some of them being on school ups and being on council, yeah, they've, they've got an idea of how it works at the moment. Um, but I think some of the issues raised, um, in particular sort of the, um, uh, by the members of the old Islamic society, uh, quite, quite interesting to hear what they say. It's not, it's not an issue that's often debated at council, it must be said. Uh, it tends to come out, as I said earlier, it comes around at the annual members meeting um, and sort of bubbles under the surface, but there's not. So I think that's, you know, I think they want to push forward on that. Um, and I think, um, I said this, um, you know, avoiding, you know, you sort of getting the union more events, more awareness of the, of, you know, the sabbatical offices is, um, it's good. Because, yeah, I can understand because, you know, we, we do as much as we can. At the end of the day, there's only five of us. We can, and there's 30 something. And to be blunt, um, we have different departments in the, uni in the union and we have a marketing department for that. Um, I don't think that it's a sabbatical office, it's always a student council member's job to go around promoting what the union does. We have members of staff to do that. Your job is to represent, regardless of what position you're elected into. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, that is true. But I mean, if they're willing to get involved, then I don't see the problem why they, they can't, you know, help out as well. And if they want to get involved with other things, too, then, you know, that's all, that's all excellent. You know, they've got our, you know, if students want to, you know, do our events and help with the advertising and marketing and uh, promoting of us, then, you know, they should only have the unions backing it as, you know, as long as it's not detrimental to anyone. Um, there's quite a range of uh, edges going for the... Uh, uh, I'll come back to I'll come back to that question. I'll uh, I'll, uh, I'll be back over to Graham. I think. Alright. 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 Sam Gardner, Ed Graham Hyde, Jason Smith, Rosanna Myers, and Mohammed Youssef. Once again, the more observant will have noticed that not all the candidates are here. They move on down. Okay. Um, I have statements from some of the candidates. I will feed them in just as I did before. Getting very bad reverb. Okay. So the first candidate was drawn at random was Mohammed Saeed. Mohammed has not submitted uh, any statements, so we will move on to candidate two, which is Mohammed Ali Majid. Hi, uh, again at the beginning. Um, yeah, sorry, again. Um, well, basically, I think everyone here is going to piggyback on the the point about tuition fees and how. Um, you know, nine thousand pounds, and you know, getting the most out of your money. But the thing is, really, in reality, you guys now, even before the fees go up, aren't getting. You know, you're, you're not getting the most out of what you should be. You're not given the things that you should be given. You know, there, there are so many issues which you guys just. You're not getting what you deserve. Basically, that simple. I mean, I, I could go on and on about all these facilities, all these issues and facilities, such as safety or education and societies. There's, there's, there's so much to talk about. I don't actually have time in this one minute. So I mean, it's just. I can't even begin to talk about it, it's that simple, because there's just so much. Um, but I mean, I've had work with other, other unis as well, uh, other societies and other unis just helping out for general things. So I do have actually quite a bit of experience with other societies and different unis, so I'm, I've got kind of a different area of experience with uh, universities as a whole, which I'm not sure if other people do have as well. Thank you. 
Hi, I'm Chris, by the way. Um, the National NUS Conference is the event where our student union discusses, debates, and decides on the issues that will affect us, the students, during the year. The amount of people that UCLan sends to the NUS National Conference is huge, and this means that our university has a massive voice. But that means we have to be confident in the people we are sending to the event. We have to know that the people going are going with our best interests at heart. There are candidates with more union experience than myself. I'm not going to deny that. Over my three years at UCLan, I've seen a lot change, some for the better, some for the worse. But rather than sit back and complain, I want to get our voice across the union. I promise you, I will work, fight, and campaign to improve life for us. Thank you. I'm Chris Anderson. NUS Annual Conference is the only chance UCLan students get to have a direct impact into what the National Union does, who it selects and how it should run for the next 12 months. Having been to conference a number of times, I understand the workings of NUS and I feel I am able to represent UCLan students effectively, vote for the motions that will best benefit UCLan students and vote for the candidates who will best serve us and the wider student body. This is our chance to voice our to have our voices heard nationally. So for a strong representative, vote Lee Bradshaw, number one for NUS delegate. Thank you. Okay, National Conference is the biggest and most important date in the NUS calendar, which is why it's important that you clans elect suitable delegates to go to the conference. As education officer and a recent graduate who's been involved with NUS and has been following NUS for many years, I know I have that knowledge and understanding to represent the students here. We may not have the loudest voice compared to unions in London, Manchester, Liverpool, Sheffield, but we've got a large number of students and they deserve somebody to go who knows what they're doing. This is the first time in years that UCLan have put a motion into conference. Students at UCLan aren't just in the UK, they're overseas as well, and with campuses opening it, opening in Cyprus and one in Thailand, it's more important than ever that we represent those students. We want NUS to support not just us, but unions across the country in this. I've been part of writing that motion, and I want to see it pass. So this is why I think you should send me to a conference as your delegate. Okay, I have a statement from Jack Banks. Hi all, Jack Joseph Banks, current APO and running for NUS delegate conference. I would like to apologize for not being able to attend. Unfortunately, question time coincided with my master's interview. During my time here at UCLan, not only have I worked as a full-time officer for the union, but I have been actively involved. I was an active member of the Men's Rugby Union Club and served as a kit coordinator and chairman, with also having worked in source as a door supervisor in my final year. So why do I want to represent you as NUS delegate? Because I believe that with UCLan's growing reputation at the national level due to the work of the members of council and the SAC, I believe that the people we send to represent us should be involved in as many aspects of the union as possible and be individuals who will make sure that when any issues arise that may affect UCLan or its students, that they are people who represent the best values, beliefs and wishes of those students and are proud to say they are from UCLan in any forum. I hope you will take this into consideration when voting and hope that you do bank on Banksy. Hello again, I'm Huma Hanif. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm well known for articulating arguments and representing views that I feel passionately about. I observed issues that need resolving and for this reason have decided to make a stand against the issues affecting our students. By representing you as NUS delegate, I promise to hear your views and interests and act as your student voice at a national level. I am friendly and approachable and willing to listen to concerns and opinions of individuals and to voice them. I give you my word that I will not only voice your opinions, but I will try my hardest to get them enforced. Um, as a student, I have found that student life is not all what, what it seems to be. I mean, the standard of living, the financial issues, the workload, it all comes down to being difficult in the end. In the current economic climate, the rise in tuition fees has affected students nationally. I will take a strong stance to absorb the rise in fees and put you in debt that will take a lot of time to pay off. My main aim is to target um, things for a daily basis. Sorry, am I cutting the time? Oh, okay, well basically, vote for me. I have a load of things that I want to do, so vote for Huma. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name's Lauren Ashcroft. I'm running for NUS delegate. Okay, so, <laughs> so uh, basically, 
the NUS is very important. It's our voice in the UK. So UConn has to decide the best candidates for the job. Basically, if I'm elected, I'll defend our rights. I'm not afraid to stand up for us. I will make sure that you clan, when I will make sure you clan has its say in the policies made, ensure NUS are doing all that they can for students, and also have the opportunity to meet other students and share our experience, and also look at how we can um, improve you clan as a whole. Can, can I just ask that people don't call out from the side? One, it puts off candidates. Two, if it actually puts off a candidate and you heckle a candidate, then I will actually add more time for that person. Okay? Uh, hi, I'm Joey Guy. I'm running for NUS delegate, obviously. Um, you know what the conference is all about. So, okay. Um, so, why should you vote for me? Basically, um, I've worked within the union now for two years. So I know, I've worked in the advice center, so I know what you guys want, I know what you need, and I know how to represent that on a national stage. Not only that, I'm also running for education officer. I'm the only candidate that's actually running who's also running for NUS delegate, which shows I actually really care. Um, so vote for me, number one for NUS delegate, and you'll have somebody that'll put your views right. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, my name's Samuel Gardner and I'm a third year politics student and I'm standing for NUS delegate. Um, why send me to the NUS delegate, to the conference? Well basically I think I'm one of the most confident, outgoing, outspoken individuals upon this stage. The, I am an everyday ordinary student and I encounter exactly the same problems that you do each and every day. And if you want to send a strong voice, send your voice, make it strong, make it confident, and vote Samuel Gardner for NUS delegate. Thank you. Hey, I'm Ed. <clears throat> I believe passionately in the importance of having a national movement of students to make sure that those in power above us hear our voice, which is always stronger as one. And this is why I would like the privilege of representing the students of UCLan at a national level. Having never been to an NUS conference, I think it would be a good thing to bring some fresh blood that has only the university matters at its heart. I would encourage you to vote for all seven positions and consider a range of different things, um, a range of different things of what they can contribute, such as the current SAC members, Becca and Jack, or experienced council members, such as Jason or Lee Bradshaw, whilst at the same time considering those that bring a different perspective, such as myself. Use your head, vote for Ed. UCLan is the fifth biggest uni in this country, and we send one of the biggest delegations to the NUS. The purpose of the conference is to set national policy for the year and to elect the next group of full-time officers. You deserve to be represented there by people who are passionate and knowledgeable and are not afraid to get up in front of a thousand people and speak on your behalf. I already sit on a national committee for the NUS. I've just been invited to be part of the student panel for the QAA which sets the standards for higher education across the country. We all have a vested interest in what happens here at UCLan and with the decisions that are made at the national level. But I'm especially motivated to make sure UCLan is the best it can be. If you want your union and your uni to be res re respected, recognised nationally, vote for the people who can make that happen. Vote for passion, vote for knowledge and vote for experience. I'm Jason Smith. Thank you very much. Okay, finally we have a statement from Rosanna Myers. Hi, I'm Rosanna and I'm a second year law student at UCLan and I'm running to represent you at the NUS conference in April. NUS gives students a voice at national level. As we all know, fees are going up this year to 9,000 and although we as current students won't be affected by that level of fees, we still need to make sure we are getting the most out of our student experience. Having a voice in the union is great, but having a voice at a national level is even better. We need to make sure that we are being heard and listened to. Voting for me to represent you at the NUS conference is a way to make sure that your voice here at UCLan is being heard and listened to at a national level. We need to make sure that we are getting the level of education and support that we deserve during our time at university. And by voting for me, you can make sure that your views are being put forward. That's Rosanna Meyer's statement. 
Okay, Stefan, do we have two questions for NUS? No questions at all. Right, I will take two questions from the floor for NUS. Sorry, one question from the floor. It is one question from the floor, so please make it a good one. Do we have a question for NUS delegates? One right at the back, that helps. <laughs> Come on, you're from Wigan, you should be able to shout. What do you think is the most important factor that you would sort of try and change or try and talk about at the conference if you were elected into the delegation thing? So the most important factor that you would bring. Okay. Um, being first again. Um, yeah, well, the thing is, I can do what I want to do, but the thing is, it's not about me, it's about you guys. Um, I... I'm, I'm only an individual. You guys are the whole community of university students. I can do what I want to do, but it's, it's, what, it's you guys that count. Um, it, I can go off and say, I think this is an issue, I think that's an issue, but really it's not, not reality. What I'd have to do is go and talk to you as a community of students and try to find out what you guys actually want, because I've got like a long list of issues, and to me pick one is kind of like, it doesn't make any sense. That's really annoying, that was my answer as well. Um, <laughs> I th he's hit the nail on the head. Literally, it doesn't. We can think what we want, but it's not our voice we're getting across. It's your voice. It's the things you want to change. Over this last week, I've spent time trying to get to every society and to every halls, finding out the issues that you guys have and that you guys want changed. And if I am elected to go to the NUS conference, it'll be the same again. Until April, I'll be coming down to every... I'll annoy the hell out of all of you. I'll come down and I'll find out what you want changed from university. Okay. Um... I've read the NUS motions document, and it's a document about that thick. It's huge. Um, and one of the things that I'm really, well, the two things that I'm really passionate about, but the one I'm going to speak about is about postgrad support. Um, while things have been going on about undergrad fees, as a postgrad student, nothing's been mentioned about how postgrads, who we pay for our fees up front by ourselves, and it's about supporting all students and making sure that postgrads also have their voices heard on the national stage as well as the issues that undergrads face. Um, I sometimes feel that NUS forget that institutions like UCLan uh, have different issues to institutions that may be in London or bigger cities. Um, I'm actually backing a candidate for Vice President of Higher Education who understands our issues. She's come and spoken to us and she's seen what UCLan is like. So I think if I go, um, I'll be um, encouraging people to vote for her because I know she can do something for UCLan. Right, there's a many, there's loads of things that I can say to you. I mean, there's a the postgrad issue. There's um, the like Islamic society wants more prayer facilities. But the main issue that I think affects all students is finances. So that's what I would con concentrate on. I want larger breastfeeding schemes. I want more student discount vouchers. That's my main aim. So vote for me. Okay, so we all know about the fees rising. So. Universities becoming, you know, less available for everybody these days. Okay, people aren't going to be able to pursue their dreams or get a good career. So what I'd like to put forward is more bursaries and scholarship opportunities. Um, if I was elected, I'd look into representation, particularly of those who are overseas. Uh, with us opening new campuses, um, in Thailand and Cyprus, I want to look into the legality of how we can best represent them. Hi. Um, the issues I would be taking forward are the everyday issues that either we're facing right now or we're about to face in the next academic year. The first one is about the disparity of services that students are going to be receiving because we're not going to be the only um, university that goes from £3,000 to £9,000 and the services that the 9,000 students receive are going to be different to what we currently receive. Um, I want to take issues like that forward. Um, the other thing as well is um, I've also been affected by my modules or my elective modules being cut, and my department, social science, is also being cut by the government. Cheers. Uh, personally, you guys have voted me in, so I would want to vote on issues that NUS is putting forward on your behalf. 
So I think Chris touched upon it when he said that he's going to annoy the hell out of you. Uh, I'm going to try and do the same if elected because I think it's important to hear what you want us to vote on. And then we go ahead and vote on it because ultimately we can't change everything. There's seven of us, but we can vote and have our say through that method instead. The biggest issue, I could give you platitudes, I could tell you what you want to hear, that I'm going to come and talk to you and I'm going to find out. That's not what this is about. You're going to vote for people to represent you because you trust them to be able to vote on their conscience on the issues that arrive on the stage on the day. There are thousands of motions that have been put forward. We can't deal with all of them in this forum. We can't even discuss all of them. And what I do promise you is that I will look at each one individually, the same as I did last year, and I will vote with my conscience in your best interests. Thank you. Okay, everybody, round of applause for all the candidates for NUS delegates. Okay, we are now going to move to the SAC positions, but we will need to draw lots for all those positions. So, while we're doing that, can I encourage people to nominate lecturers of the year, personal tutors of the year. You will see the back, back in the atrium. Um, we've got a new microphone. Um, I'm here still with Rennie. Um, Rennie, you're going to be the uh, NUS presidential delegate, so you're going to be taking a group of those students down with you. Um, what sort of personalities would you want to take down with you to um, Sheffield? I think it's less about personality for me. I mean, I'm the lead delegate the delegate leader for a national conference this year, so the student union president always goes um, as ex officio by virtue of your office. For me, it's less about personality and more about knowledge. Um, to be honest with you, what I saw there was some limited understanding of um, actually what UCAN Students Union is taking to um, national conference this year. That information has been available throughout the website, throughout student media, etc., etc. Um, when the motion was drawn up, um, it was taken to student council, and student council know about it, and it was emailed out to all. So I'm surprised at the amount of candidates who stood up there and, and didn't mention it. Um, I'm surprised that only one candidate motion, um, mentioned the NUS motions document, and also was quite surprised about the fact that people spoke about things on a local capacity when NUS is really national. So for me, it's very less about, very much about um, understanding of what exactly you're going into rather than personality. I wouldn't mind if my worst men enemy went with me as long as I understood what's going on. Incidentally, my worst enemy is not running this um, election. Well, that's lucky, I suppose. Um, so have you got an idea in your head as to the things you're going to bring up um, at, the, at, the, uh, at the NUS? Thing. My friend, I don't just have an idea in my head. Um, we've drawn up a, a motion about overseas campuses on behalf of the UCLan Students' Union, which has been ratified by UCLan Student Council, which has now been made public to all students. That is exactly, that's what we're taking. We're arguing for clarification of legal representation for students who are studying at UCLan branded institutions in places like Thai, Thailand and Cyprus. So we know exactly what we're sending, and that's available to all students. Um, the motions deadline was two weeks ago, <laughs> so uh, whilst I appreciate some of the issues that candidates brought up in this election around um, around student life, yes, we'll all have the opportunity to vote on those things whilst we're at the conference, but what you guys at Student Union is submitting has already been um, publicised and submitted. Um, so I was asking you a question just before we had to give back to Gareth. Um, there's quite a different, there's quite a lot, a big range in sort of ages. Do you think age has a bearing on whether you can be a good council member? I mean, you've got first years, you've got third years, you've got postgraduates. So do you think that has a bearing on whether you can be um, on on your effects that you have on the student council on your voice? I think the diversity is an excellent thing. I mean, I think that it's been a crying shame that for far too long the Students' Union has only been incredibly effective at representing 16 to 24-year-olds. But, you know, the majority of our students at UCAN are part-time, um, mature students who are commuting in, and we really need to see that kind of um, representation on, on our representative bodies. It's great to see postgrads running. It's great to see an age range. It's great to see people who are first year running in the, these elections as well, because I think that too often people um, suddenly become very aware of the union in their third year when everybody's running for sabbatical positions or in their first year during Freshers' Week. So I'm all for a big mix, a big melting pot of different people getting involved. Um, 
Uh, I asked this to Dave before. Um, you were obviously in this position last year, running for president. Um, how do you think they're all sort of feeling now at the minute? I mean, a few of them have been up, but you've got the presidential candidates and um, so the APO, the education candidates to come. How do you think they're all feeling at the minute? Because it's, it's a bit, it's a big, it's a it's a big ask in quite a short time to get that speech out there. I mean, I've always been of the opinion that if you really believe that you're good enough to work for the union for a year, then you should be able to try out your policies like that. You should be able to convince people why you sh they should vote for you like that. And so I'm sure there's going to be an element of nervousness, but ultimately, I think, if you believe you can do the job, then be confident in putting it across. This time last year, I wasn't too worried because I thought I was the best candidate. And I would like to think that all candidates standing for the position felt that they were the best candidate. Um, there's, again, there's a number of issues. Going back to the student council, there was a number of, of issues brought up. Um, the faith issue. Do you think that um, the quite the faith is quite w well represented because it's been reported recently in Pluto that some of the um, in the multi faith centre people can't get in for prayer and stuff like that. So it's been talked of uh, maybe a swipe card system similar to the library and uh, also the green issues as well. How do you think Yukon's reacted to? Uh, green issues. <laughs> um, <laughs> apologies. Um, yeah, how do you think Uclan's reacted to sort of green, the way the way the world's changing in terms of green issues and things like that? Well, actually, um, the last time that I remember, the last um, audit that we went through with um, the Sound Impact Awards, which used to be called the Green Impact Awards, we won silver. A few years ago, the, we won gold. Um, we're eighth in the Green League in, of universities, and that's out of every university in the country. So we're doing pretty well. I don't think it's a, an incredibly important issue, but it's always something that's worth having a new peripheral vision. So actually, UCAN as a university and UCAN SU as a union has had really good accolades in the past. Um, faithful vision, I think that it's always really, it's a lot easier when you're in a full-time officer position to change something within the union rather than within the university. Um, and I can't speak on behalf of my colleagues, but I know that it's been quite tough having negotiating with the university around faith provision, and it's a, always an ongoing um, conversation. But Dave's right. He mentioned earlier that um, it was. He mentioned earlier that it's an issue that comes around every annual general meeting, and then it, it's rarely um, represented at council meetings throughout the year. So it sort of gets shunted off the uh, priorities. But it's great to see people running to to change it because ultimately what I'd like to see is people run for full-time positions with this sort of thing in their manifestos. Um, just on a personal note, how, how do you think your, your year's gone as president? Um, of, um, there's been a few things happen like with all the Frankie Kakosa stuff at uh, 53 degrees and uh, promo, uh, not promo, vodka nationwide being cancelled. Um, how do you think, have, have you got over that stuff and, and, and do you think you've got around it well enough? I mean, you say got over, but to be honest with you, I ran for president not to manage a club night, not to um, worry about student entertainment. I ran because I was already a student representative and I wanted to continue that. So actually, I was late to this um, Question Chime event because I was at a student charter meeting with the Pro Vice Chancellor Student Experience and the director of Burnley Campus um, negotiating with senior members of university staff about the student heart, which is an incredibly poor document. I'll be honest with you. Um, Frankie Kokosa, I don't care about him. Yeah. Promo, it wasn't working. Yeah. And these are things that, you know, I think that they may, they're may they short-term incredibly important issues, but in the long term, that's not what the student experience is about. The student experience is about getting a fair deal um, when people like me um, speak on behalf of people like you to the university. That's why I ran for the position. Um, so I say it's less about getting over and more. For me, those things are another priorities. Of course, I managed them when I had to because I'm the official spokesperson of the union. But no, I didn't run for this position to um, revolutionize 53 Degrees. Though I will say that um, the work that the staff 53 Degrees are doing um, to <laughs> to really like be responsive to student opinion is absolutely great. But I, I'll always say, the student union, yes, it's led by five sabbatical officers, but we have staff to do that job. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, so I think my year's gone great. I think I've made some um, important stances to the university about where we stand in terms of student rights, especially overseas campuses and the student charter. So I'm really proud of a lot of the work that I've done this year. And when I go, I know I'll be remembering putting my case to the university about the student charter and not Frankie Kokosa.
<laughs> Brilliant. Um, as someone who's from Burnley, um, how do you think um, that Preston and Burnley campus sort of go together? Do, do their student do the student unions work together, or are they are they sort of a separate entity? Um, well, the student union is um, facilitated by a member of staff from this from this union from this building. So we have a member of staff from this building who works half the work here and half the work there to facilitate student activities. Um, and I think that it works quite well. I think there's always room for improvement. But, but yeah, that provision has always come from us. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> we've, been, uh, we've been talking for like five minutes now. <laughs> we've been talking for quite a long time. Um, how do you think it's gone? How do you think the, um, the NUS delegates sort of gave... Did you have any favourites? I mean, I'm not I don't know, naming no names, but did you have any sort of people who you, you would rather go with you? I don't think that I'm going to be permitted to say. I think that I'm, I'm a member of the union. I'm a member of the union, um, and I get a vote, and I've got my own opinions about um, the candidates who I'd like to win and the candidates I wouldn't like to see win. But I'll say that in a commercial capacity, and right now I'm at work. So, <laughs> But I think that, I mean, I spoke about understanding of what we're t this union is taking to national conference a bit earlier, and I'm, I'm going to put it out there and say that... Um, yeah, I was disappointed to see such little understanding from a lot of the candidates. But I also think that that's something that can be learnt quite quickly before the conference. So I'm still optimistic. Right, so we can hand back to um, Gareth, uh, who's the returning officer, and um, we'll be uh, we'll be back after that. All this for us. Show your appreciation for all those people, please. Can we have the candidates for activities and participations officer to the stage? Chris Anderson, Gemma McCleary, Ben Latham and Andrew Hoskins. Okay, so we're clear on the rules. Nice and loud. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the first person up is Chris Anderson. Hello there. I'm Chris Anderson, and I'm campaigning to be your APO. During this year, I was instrumental in the setup for the New American Football Club. Due to this, I fully understand the challenges faced by new societies and clubs in getting started, and I want to change this. As APO, my aim would be would be to create an atmosphere where we can bring all members of the union together under one banner as one U-clan. To link societies and sports and to give them equal importance here at the uni. To continue the good work of current APO Jack Banks, who has started the process of rebranding the sports teams by securing a single kit supplier and sponsor. But I want to expand this and bring that ethos that we are all one U-clan. I want to make societies a bigger part of UCLan, to make them more accessible and to make them easier to start, to bring together students with similar interests and similar ideas and support them through the process, and ultimately bring all societies back where they belong at the very heart of the union. I also want to improve the publicity, accessibility and enjoyability of both sports and societies to make sport more affordable by campaigning for the restructuring of gym costs and by boosting societies via social and student media. I don't pretend to have all the answers, but if you vote for me, I promise to make myself accessible to all students, to spend as much time as possible with societies and clubs to find out your opinions, thoughts and concerns. If you have a problem, I promise to work with you to find an answer. Thank you for listening. I'm Chris Anderson. Thank you, Chris.
Gemma McCleary. Hi guys, I'm Gem Gem. Um, I'm a, thor a third year sports therapist. Um, I'm currently a member of the hockey club and committee and I've also been a member of the Gaelic and netball team since I've been here. Um, since being at the uni, I've seen areas that I think should, could, can be changed for the better. At the minute, I don't think there's enough affiliation between the sports societies and international students within the uni. And I want to get rid of this. I want to bring them together, doing RAG events, which is reason and given, to include everybody, getting everyone to work together to make their time at uni better. Um, to be in a sports club at the minute, it costs a lot of money. Um, you have to be a member of the gym. You also have to pay to play at, for the facilities at Sir Tom Finney and for PSA, well, USA. Um, I'm one to campaign to try to get packages that you only pay for the facilities that you use. So if you're in a club that doesn't use either of them, you don't have to pay for them. That's what I want to bring. Um, Coaching is also a massive problem at the uni. I want to reevaluate all coaching for all clubs and try to get things better for you. You deserve the best coaching while you are here. Um, the inclusion of disabled students within sports and societies is an issue within this uni that I feel, if elected, I would like to give everybody the opportunity to have equality for all students. I want to do this by giving the coaches and the chairs of societies and sports the advice and help that they need to ensure that this happens. I feel I'm the best candidate to represent you, and if you give me this opportunity to do this, it'll be great. And remember, jump on Gem Gem for a few. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Gem. Ben Latham. Hi, guys. Uh, I'm Ben Latham. Um, I'm running for APA because um, I'm passionate about creating new and uh, exciting experiences for all students. And I really want to put UCLan on the map nationally. Um, I'm from way down south, uh, southeast England, and I want to be able to go home and visit him and hear students there talking about UCLan, about an amazing freshness sport night they've got going on, or a, a huge rag week with some insane events. Um, we've already got many fantastic things sort of going on with societies and clubs uh, who dedicate a lot of time and effort. Um, and to put on events and activities for everyone to enjoy. But unfortunately, I think a lot of the time they don't get the sort of uh, recognition that they deserve. And as APO, I strive to make sure all societies and smaller clubs, uh, especially, um, uh, receive optimal promotion. Um, um, for sports clubs, I want to forge strong links with local clubs and teams to ensure that we have access to a bit more facilities. Because, I mean, one of the issues we have here at UCLan is we can't expand the campus much being in, in a city location. Um, and so by forging these links with clubs, we can have more access to both uh, pitches, uh, equipment, but more importantly, coaches and referees, which I've found is an issue with a lot of the clubs. Um, and also be a, it'd be a mutual, mutual um, relationship so we can make a, a better representation for UCLan in the community. Um, with the new high fee students coming in in September, of course, we want to make sure that um, okay, all existing students um, have exactly the same opportunities as the new ones. Um, so, but overall, look, what I would say is that every uh, club and society is different. We've got a massive range of students who aren't involved, and uh, I would just say that I would always be a approachable, friendly face, always willing to listen and deal with issues as they come. So, believe in Ben Latham for APO. Thank you, Ben. And the final candidate is Andrew Hoskins. Right. Good afternoon, guys. I'm Andy Hoskins, and for the last four years, I've been a key member of the Club Tennis Club, becoming second team captain in 2010 and working my way to the top of the tree as chairman in 2011. This position has allowed me to gain great organisation qualities, such as ordering kits and sponsorship, but more importantly, I feel I've gained an outstanding relationship with fellow students and the student union. Being a part of this has helped me fulfil my time at UCLan, and it has led to many great experiences. By taking the role of APO, I intend to give you students the same or better experiences I once had. As I stated in my manifesto, I feel that improved and closer links between the clubs and societies are an important factor, and I feel they have become somewhat segregated in the past. My intent will be to improve the running of inter-club events, like fundraising events and activities, in which your club or society will be proud to be a part of, like Sports Ball 2013. This will result into more of the same, more clubs interacting and people participating. By holding events like this, the money raised could contribute to UCLan's raise and give, where club, clubs or societies could claim half the money raised. 
and the other half going to the charity of their choice. This would not only improve the links between clubs and societies, but also help raise awareness of how great the students at UCLan are. Another policy that I feel passionate about is Give It A Go. I aim to increase sports particip participation for Give It A Go through the Sports Fair in Freshers Week, as I feel it hasn't been pushed in the past. Through raising the profile of Give It To Go at the sports fair, I believe students are aware of it and at the word go, and it helps them get engaged with sport at UCLan from the start. This will hopefully for, like, progress to participation in books and SUL leagues. As part of Give It To Go, the introduction of student taster classes for gym membership at Sir Tom Finney would increase the number of students signing up as they have exper experienced what Tom Finney has to offer. I believe that offering a number of taster sessions for teams or clubs at STFSC or PSA during Freshers wouldn't only add to the fun-filled atmosphere that Freshers has to offer, but a try before you pay basis. It would increase the levels of students signing up as they are aware and confident of what they are joining. The voice of the students is a key, and I'll do what I can to work around you and listen to what I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Do we have a question? We've got four questions. Okay, we'll take three. Okay, the first question is, how would you go about creating and sustaining new clubs and societies? How would you go about create, creating and sustaining new clubs and societies? Okay, we're going to do it in the same order, starting with Chris. Um, as I said in my speech, I was part of the team that set up the new American football team, uh, which has given me a lot of experience about how difficult it is to start something here at UCLan. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is to create a toolbox kind of thing. So work with current societies and current clubs uh, to, uh, to create ways and so you have the information to give to the people who want to start a new society and that they've got something to work from from the offset. Okay. Um, Jem? Oh. <laughs> uh, talking to um, a few of the students at the minute, um, about setting up new societies next year. Uh, just giving them the actual information, everything that they need to get, everything that they need to find out, the amount of people that they need in order to have, to set up the society or the sports club in the first place. Everywhere that they can get the facilities, give them all that information and give them one-to-one -one support the whole way through and be there the whole way and make sure that it's done. Um, I think this one would be a good one to work alongside the Sport for You lot, who would do a great job as it is. Um, I know that they do handball, I think they're looking to go into a club for next year, and they're also looking to introduce a few disability sports. And so I think that will be a key one to make sure people would get Sport for You to try out new sports, which is suggested before we confirm them as a club. The APL responsibility is to keep themselves open and to make sure that you work around what they want to do and help support them in their process. The idea is to get committees together and help them get the ideas to provide them with money or support or backup to help run their club. Keep it simple and fun and something they would like to do and take a part of it. Yeah. Okay, the second question is, what experience do you have to do the job well? Okay, what experience do you have to do the job well? Um... As I said, I've been part of the American football team. Before that, I've played on the football team, the Gaelic football team, and the cricket team. So my sporting knowledge and my sporting experience is all there for everyone to see. I've also worked before I came to university in America as an events coordinator. And this gives me uh, a lot of experience in how to organize and start something. And then also working through that, it gives you organization and other such skills. Um, yeah, go. Uh, <laughs> um, this year I've been a member of the committee for the hockey club and that's uh, been the kit sec so it's meant that I've had to be in charge of a massive club getting the kit getting the orders in handling the money everything like that um, I've been a member of the netball club the Gaelic club and the hockey club since being here and I've also went to a few 
dance socials, but not that, like dance classes, not that I can dance very well. Um, but before I came here, I was part of the student um, youth council where I live, and I was in charge of putting across the points that the students brought to me. Um, well, I've been studying outdoor leadership for the last three years, and so I've done a lot of work in uh, outdoor settings, especially with the kayak club. Um, and um, this year, I've been recently involved with snow sports and squash. Uh, I've also been recently involved with the Gilden Games Committee, which we've been running this year. And we did the disability sports event the other week, which was a great success. Over the last two years, I've gained skills for me in second team. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, uh, in 2007 I became second team captain. I, uh, I gained lots of organisation skills like organising fixtures, transport to fixtures, uh, getting some kits sorted, organising your team, getting uh, nice relationships with people and that. And then last year when I was made chairman, it took those abilities to an extra level. It made me more confident in speaking to people, uh, people I didn't know, and then get relation getting better relationships with other clubs. Again, getting more contacts regarding kits, by Bellevue students for the tennis club, and so on and so forth. Okay, and the final question is, some sport teams have been criticised for their conduct in recent years, where other teams seem to get away with similar actions. How do you plan on dealing with this? So some sport teams have been criticised for their conduct in recent years, where other teams seem to get away with similar actions. How do you plan on dealing with this? Um, I think the idea from that becomes uh, from some people viewing some sports teams as more important than others. As I said in my speech, I want to make us one new clan. Everyone is equal. Everyone is on a level playing field. If someone does one thing in one sports team and gets away with it, whereas another, uh, a different sports team does the same thing, they will not get away with it. Ne neither side will get away with it. So I was trying to get, trying to get across there. At the beginning of the year, I'd like to set out guidelines that are going to be expected of people, what they can and cannot do, that are expected at socials when they're away on uh, buses, when they're away at away matches, on away on events. Make that clear to them from the beginning. And if something does arise, treat every single person the same. If they, I'm a really approachable person, so I'd like to think that people will come in, have a sit down, have a chat with me. I wouldn't use their names. I'd never go any further. I'd, I'd deal with it myself and with the rest of the guys. Thanks. Uh, I com completely agree with Jem there. Just uh, laying down the guidelines at the start of the year, making sure everyone knows exactly what, what the situation is. And we just need to police ourselves um, amongst your own teams and looking out for the other teams as well. Yeah, as I've said, um, it's not that it's up to th those clubs on the night, on the day, where if they do an action like that or not, all we can do is dis dis disciplinary it when it, it happens or not, and we'll do our best to try and sort it out. Thank you. Okay, that concludes the hustings for this position, so I'd like everybody to give a round of applause for all four APO candidates as they leave the stage. Okay, the next position that will be done is the media we're back. Um, we're, uh, I'm here with Dave, Dave's returned, uh, Rennie's still here. We've just had the hustings for the activities and participation officer. Um, how do you think that went, Dave? Um, I thought, yeah, it was quite interesting. The only, I said, the only um, thing that I think many would agree with me on is that um, until a question came up, there was no talk about societies. Um, we've got so many societies here at UCLan. Um, and this year there's been a fluctuation of new societies and I didn't hear anything from anybody that talked about that. It was all, all you know, sport. I mean, I know the sport is a big, big part here, but, um, but there was sort of no talk about the societies and we've got so many societies here. It was disappointing not to hear what they, you know, that no one seems to have thought outside the world of sport. Um, and, uh, yeah, how, how hard is it to set up a society? That was one of the questions. Yeah, yeah, it's very hard. I mean, you need uh, you need the membership. You need um, you need to get at least ten people. You need to be able to pr produce a plan that makes the, the students' union go, yes, we want you to be a society. You can be an affiliated society. And it's very difficult to go from scratch. But you know, there's a there's a whole department okay, to help. Uh, we'll take turn, we'll Each have two minutes.
Jack, do you want to start us off? Yep. I've been involved in student media since my first week here. I've seen quite a lot happen in the Pluto office over the last three years and worked under three different media offices. And the way in which I've seen the last three take on the role stands me in great stead to hopefully take over and reignite passion for student media. I know the process of what, what works and what doesn't and have a good gauge of what people want. I'm a journalist for The Independent and contributed to The Guardian for three years, so I'm well aware of the sort of quality our SU needs. The paper and magazine have vastly improved this year, but I'm still not happy enough with their online presence. Pluto has under 300 Facebook friends, and in a university of thousands, that is a huge disappointment and undermines the superb work media volunteers are doing. Social media is a major player on any landscape, and I want a band of marketing students to help promote frequency, Pluto, PR1, and PSTV. Debate has been raging online at students doing courses other than journalism being overlooked in recent years. Whether that is true or not, I want students with an interest in filming, commentating, writing, producing, or designing to beat my door down next year to get involved in the media platforms we offer. And I pledge to converge all forms of our media in order to create a brand. News and interview packages will be produced for PSTV to ramp up its content. And I'm not in the business of making promises that I simply cannot keep. After significant research, I can promise that news will be produced for PSTV and Frequency, as well as Pluto. Frequency will, will become 24 hours and be broadcast across campus for freshers. There'll be a weekly PSTV and Frequency news show, and there'll be live broadcasts and highlights of sporting fixtures every week. The most experienced candidate doesn't always win, but please make sure it happens this year. It's time to vote Jack Gorn for media officer. Brilliant. Thank you, Jack. And Sophie, you again have two minutes. Hello, everybody. My name's Sophie Bennett, and I'm standing for media officer here at UCLan. It's been interesting to read everyone's manifestos, and even more of an eye-opener to observe the differing approaches people take. There's been much said from quotas of I, me, and I will. My approach will be a little different. Supported by my direct working experience within media and events in particular, the intent is to focus upon we and us, and to incorporate, integrate, and represent all sectors of the university within the media arm. We need to embrace fully our now multicultural situation and fully represent every race, creed, gender, and age. There is a wealth of knowledge and experience out there ready to be tapped, and to not do this would be a missed opportunity. How do I aim to do this? I have been exposed to television, radio, and journalism all my life, as both my parents are lifelong media workers. Working personally within the Trinity Mirror and Bauer Media, I've gained valuable, valuable first-hand experience within radio, including actual transmission, presenting, event planning, and uh, execution. I see myself as a facilitator and an expediter using the contacts gained and experience earned to get results. To ensure development of a strong team working ethos within the existing media team, I will incorporate volunteers and encourage long-term growth through recognizing and rewarding them. After all, the volunteers are the vital component. From discussion with the students, there seems to be a lack of awareness of what media at UCLan has to offer. Work needs to be done to publicise and increase that awareness, and I believe that should happen through wider involvement of the whole student body through fortnightly polls, debates, competitions that are worth talking about to create that want to pick up the paper or to log online. Please vote for me, Sophie Bennett, for media. Let's stop talking about it and make it happen. <laughs> Thank you, Sophie. And uh, next we'll go to Alison. You have two minutes starting now. Hi, everyone. My name is Alison Whitfield, and I want to be your media officer for 2012. I believe that I am the best candidate for this position because my experience and knowledge spans across print, online, radio, and television. I'm hugely passionate about student media, and I believe that students at UCLan deserve the best opportunities possible. From speaking to students over the last few weeks, I've found that too many students at UCLan feel they are excluded from student media due to their course background. I want to encourage any student to get involved in student media as it can provide fantastic experience and impressive work to show to prospective employers. Students will be paying huge amounts of money to come to this university and I will make sure that their student media experience gets them their money's worth. 
I have studied all aspects of journalism over the last few years and I have presented for Frequency Radio and written for Pluto. I have other experience working for BBC Radio Lancashire as a reporter, JDG Media as a website contributor, and tomorrow afternoon I will be presenting a two and a half hour sports show live from the TV studio in Greenbank Building, which will then hand over to live commentary at Preston Sports Arena and reporters from other Yukon sports games. The show will be streamed live online and is a groundbreaking show which has never been attempted before at UConn and will be produced completely by UConn students as presenters, commentators, equipment operators and directors. I will strive to increase these opportunities for students in the future. All of these are great examples of why my experience and skills highlight why I believe that I can show a real difference to UConn student media. So vote Alison Whitfield for media because Whitfield is working for you. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you Alison. And now Paul. Hello everyone. I'd like to start by praising the fantastic work that RSU Media has done so far this year. <laughs> At Pluto, we have chased hard-hitting news that have got you talking and we've re represented the plights and campaigns of our diverse range of clubs and societies, giving their campaigns a voice. With PR1, we've produced some fantastic features and some great interviews such as comic legend Dave Spikey. I want to build on this and Sorry, give me a second. <laughs> and at Pierce TV and Frequency, our teams of passionate presenters, producers, and equipment operators have continued to create some great shows. Now is the time to push these achievements even further. Having contributed to Pluto since I came here a year ago, I believe that we can do this by injecting new talent into our media. This year has seen a disheartening lack of first year students contributing to our media. This is due to communication issues between our media and our students, and the taboo that only journalism students can write and contribute to our media. UConn is a fantastic institute with some very talented students. We have great writers, fantastic camera operators and some talented presenters who could all bring new ideas, new passions and a new direction to our media. Through greater advertising around the university and better liaison with our lecturers, new students can be made aware of the great opportunities that SU Media can provide for all of our students. With a fresh injection of ideas and contributors, we can push our media forward, representing the campaigns of our societies. From the ISOX struggling with the ineffective opening hours of the multi-faith centre to our smaller sports teams gaining success in national competitions, the SU media has a responsibility to make their voices heard. This can be achieved. Frequency and Pierce TV needs to be broadcast around our union. In Source and the Sir Tom Finney Sports Centre, UConn sporting successes need to be shown so we can take a pride in the students and our pride in our union. So I am standing to bring new students to our media, to expand our media and to use our media to present our clubs and represent our clubs and society better. So bet on Bowden for a student media that we can all be proud of. Thank you. Thank Hi you, everyone. Paul. Thank you Paul. And now over to Terry ann you have two minutes. Hi, um, I'd just like to start by saying Pluto, PSTV and PR1, as well as Frequency, are all outlets of your student media, which are run by student volunteers who give up many of their precious hours to devote themselves to it. I remember the first time I heard of student media at UCLan. It was at a UCLan Open Day and other students involved spoke to us about the benefits of being involved in student media. So in my first year at UCLan, I signed up to write for Pluto. Being part of student media has helped me to develop my writing skills, along with people skills and other attributes that I feel I would not have developed if I was not involved. Along with this, I have also made some brilliant friends. Student media should be everything to somebody, not just something for everyone. Being a part of Pluto and being features editor is everything to me. I realised that I came to UCLan to get a degree, but this has helped me improve in ways that I could not have been taught. Having that responsibility is priceless. I realised that a lot of people have issues with student media, whether it's because they don't like the people who run it, or they don't like the content, or they think that the equipment is outdated. I would love to stand here and promise you all that I will get the state of art facilities and make our publications world class, but I just can't. Student media here is what the volunteers make it, and without them, we would not get very far. What I would like to do if I'm elected as media officer is make PSTV more public, making students more aware of it. The team at PSTV do a great job of filming gigs and sporting events. I'd like to make it a lot more successful. I'd like to improve the sound quality that Frequency produces, possibly look into ways that new equipment could be used, and appeal to UCLan's cafes and shops to have Frequency playing throughout the day. With PR1, I would like to look into the design and layout of the magazine, 
as PR1 is a great outlet for people who don't just want to read news, but want to read about fashion, lifestyle, film, and music. I would think about introducing a review section into Pluto, as well as reporting on more local news, and perhaps tie this in with some softer national news stories. With the online side of student media, I want to keep going with the great work that Dave has put Time in candidate. over the past year. Time. Just vote for Terry Ann. <laughs> Okay, we've had three questions submitted, so we will be taking all three questions. Um, candidates have 30 seconds to answer. Um, it will go in the order of speeches. The first question is, raising awareness of the union, promoting its services, are ideas put forward by many. Do you think student media should be an internal promoter for the union or an independent news source, and why? Uh, it should be an independent news source. I'm sorry to anyone that wants to promote the union within student media, um, but... The media itself is, is a standalone body. Um, it's a new service to students. It's not to promote societies. However, I've spoken to a few people from sports and societies, and we are looking into doing more coverage of sport on a Wednesday specifically to improve that side of the, uh, the media. OK. Next candidate. Um, I think it should be internal. Um, they, it should be about students, shouldn't it? Basically, with sports and societies, I want to make it a holistic uh, newspaper, expressing views, getting debates going, to create that want for the paper. So, yeah, I definitely think it should be internal, as it is about the students' union. It is about the students. It's about the voice. Okay. Alison? Um, I think that it should be internal. At the end of the day, this university is a community, and everyone involved in this university is part of that community. The UCLan media should be promoting everything that goes on here, whether that be sports, societies, or groups. So I would like to push the promotion of that across the board. Okay, and Paul? Students, media uni sorry, students' union media needs to represent the students of that union. The sports teams, the societies, and the individual messages of each student need to be represented by a media. Yes, it needs to remain independent, but it also needs to represent the messages that students want to put across. And that, therefore, it is important that the union represents the members of its union. Thank you. And finally, Terry ann um, I think it should be independent. I think if we advertise every single society, then it's just going to end up as a magazine or a newspaper of posters. It is important that we do promote societies, but I think the university can do that in other ways, not just student media. Okay, thank you, candidates. The second question is, media volunteers often take a lot of criticism for their work. How do you aim to project, protect their interests whilst producing quality publications? Jack, if you want to go first. Media volunteers know what they're taking on when they're writing for Pluto or going on Frequency or going on PSTV. I believe that the volunteers, I can only speak for myself, I've got broad shoulders. I took it on when people criticised my work and hopefully people in their first and second year can, can do the same. Sophie? I believe that every person is an individual, so I think um, you can't stop criticism at the end of the day. Um, and like he said before, you, if you're willing to go out there and write a thing, you've got to also accept the criticism that may come with it. Alison? Um, I think that you will always have to expect criticism. Um, it's just the world that we live in. And I think that a lot of people should, who get involved with student media should be encouraged to voice their opinions, but in a professional manner. And everyone should feel that they can criticise work if that's their free opinion. But we have to still encourage the students who get involved to wholeheartedly go about that professionally. Um, Paul? Our media volunteers dedicate a lot of their time and work within the community. So any complaints against one person is a complaint against everyone and a complaint against the community. As a media officer, I take those complaints on board, talk to the people involved, and reach a professional and diplomatic solution to any complaints raised. Criticisms are, of course, welcome at any time to keep work professional, 
but the interests of the individual contributors need to be protected. Brilliant. Thank you, Paul. And finally, Terry ann SU Media is run by volunteers, and if I'm elected, I would like to protect them in every way. Criticism is hard, and we are to expect it running such a big organisation. But our media volunteers do expect this and take this so gracefully, and I hold my hands up to them. They're brilliant, all the volunteers that we have at Pluto, PSTV, and Frequency, and PR1. Thank you, candidates. The third and final question is, how will you get PSTV and Frequency around campus? How will you make it technically possible through the experience you have? Uh, well, I know Dave spent a lot of money in the last couple of weeks making the equipment um, better in Frequency. Um, and I've, I plan to broadcast Frequency across the campus during Freshers' Week. Um, it's a thousand pounds a week, so it's not something that's viable all throughout the year, and I don't believe anyone that tells you that it is is telling you the truth. However, I want to increase content on PSTV to include lots of sports coverage, especially on a Wednesday, and have more debate and discussions on frequency as well to get students involved. Okay. <laughs> Sophie. I believe that publicising it effectively uh, through various marketing techniques um, is the way to go. So we'd publicise it at Freshers' Week and publicise it, pu publicise it throughout the year. I think people forget, oh, it's just Freshers' Week and we'll do it then. But to keep it going throughout the year, keep mentioning them, keep getting the signs um, and keep them moving. Um, yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> Alison. Um, there have been quite a lot of high profile financial limitations with PSTV and Frequency and the team here have worked ridiculously hard to try and solve those problems but there's different ways that we can go about it. As the other candidates have said, promoting everything in freshers, getting people on board and liaising with lecturers um, such as mine with the shows that are going out like tomorrow and getting UCLan students to do stuff in their university time to help and liaise with lecturers and Frequency and PSTV. Again, promotion um, is the key to this. Sorry. Yep. Promotion is the key to getting our media broadcast wider. We have TVs in this room here, we have TVs down in Sir Tom Finney Sports Centre and we have TVs in Source. I know that realistically it can't be a 24-hour service, but every so often a big game, a big cup final where we can get behind our union and be proud of our sports teams needs to be broadcast so there's greater pride in the union. And downstairs in Essentials, I work there also, we have occasionally put frequency radio on. And if a big show is coming on, for example, a, a debate, new shows that we introduce should be broadcast through the radios at Essentials so that people hear our, our messages. Thank Time. you. Thank you. And finally, Terry ann I'd like to try and encourage more volunteers to PSTV and Frequency, as well as trying to get them both broadcast throughout the university in cafes and shops. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you for that, candidates. Can I ask the audience to give a round of applause to all major candidates? <laughs> Can I now ask for all candidates standing for campaigns officer to come to the stage, and I will hand over to Gareth, who will be presenting the next bit. Hello and welcome back. I'm here with Dave again, who is the current media officer, so this should be of uh, some interest to you, this one. Um, how do you think it went, first of all? Uh, yeah, a really, really interesting debate. Um, a bit of a disappointment that no one's... Um, I said, a bit of a disappointment that no one's picked up on uh, tonight. No one mentioned anything, you know, there's cameras in their faces. Um, however, you know... At the end, we can't help that. It, what was interesting was in talking about um, protecting your volunteers, the, or, no, the independence of student media. Even. Those involved with student media, the candidates that have done, said it should be independent, and those that haven't said it should be internal. So that's interesting to see the differences of opinion. Um, Okay, when we begin with Paul Ridgard. Hi, I'm Paul. I've got the slogan, Bald is Best. I'm running for campaigns officer because not only do I believe you deserve better, I believe you deserve the best. The best from UCLan, 
the best out of me and the best from the student union team. I'm not afraid to speak out or tread upon a few tools to get the best out of you, clan. It's not about being popular. It's about making sure that services are working right for you. Together, we will fight for better feedback, mental health rights, and accommodation exchange. Better feedback. You deserve better feedback now to improve your chances of a higher degree. I want to make sure that the Learning Development Unit is communicating effectively with tutors and that tutors are doing more to improve your chances of a higher degree. Mental health rights. I want to raise mental health awareness and campaign for more understanding and better support. We need better accommodation rights as well, so we're not put into places where our own mental health will deteriorate. Hopefully, we can prevent students from committing suicide in the future. Accommodation exchange. You deserve to be treated like an adult. You deserve the right to exchange accommodation, giving you the freedom of choice, instead of being locked into a contract which is more like a prison sentence, and sometimes that comes with torture. So vote, bold is best. Paul for campaign's officer. Thank you, Paul. Okay, the next candidate to speak is Esther Wilkes. Okay, I have two words of wisdom for you before I start. Corduroy pillows, they're making headlines. And then there are two words in life that will open many doors for you. Push and pull. So now that some more of you are smiling, that leads me nicely onto my campaign. Smile and vote, Esther. So why smile? because these are the five issues that I want to focus on if I was voted in. They are to do with stress, money, image, listening and eating. How can we as a union provide ways of helping you deal with stress, whether it be course related or life related? Money. This week it's National Student Money Week and the Advice Centre is raising awareness of how to handle money. I want programmes like this to have a greater profile on campus and other programmes throughout the year. Also for students to be better aware of the bursaries and funding available to them whilst they study. Image looks at body image and self-esteem. You may be getting great results on your course, but if you're not happy while you're doing it, you're missing out on some of the best years of your life. Listening to students is vital. What are the key issues to you? How can I as campaigns officer help you to campaign with the issues that affect you and that you're passionate about? And finally, eating. I want to see a better provision and promotion of where halal food is sold on campus. Support and advice for those affected by eating problems. And most significantly, shuttle buses to supermarkets. Audi is okay, but not having a basket to do your shopping with and a limited thing is quite frustrating, isn't it? So as the saying goes, the world is brighter from behind a smile. You clan, it is good to smile. I hope you smile and vote Esther for campaigns. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you, Esther. The next candidate is Lee McNeil. Hello, I'm Lee Mack, and I'm running for the position of Campaigns Officer. I'm currently the holder of Campaign of the Year, which I received last year. Many candidates have mentioned different strategies against the UCLan advantage, but I have nothing mentioned in the manifestos. If elected, I intend to make this one of my main priorities by making sure every student gets exactly what he or she deserves and also keeping in with the issues surrounding retention, fresh in people's minds, especially that of senior university, university staff. I want to work with the university and make, it, make, every sure, make, make sure every student feels wanted. Also, being students, we have rights. Our rights to live in clean and hygienic environments and not being fobbed off by landlords. I want to work with students on numerous level, levels and incorporate the accommodation team to ensure students with accommodation problems get them solved with the backing of the unit and the advice centre. Another thing which is close to my heart is mental health awareness. We all know how stressful exams and deadlines, deadlines can be. Um, there are support systems in place um, within the union and within the university. I want to help people connect with these services and push these to you. After being involved with the union since I've came to UCLAM, I've been a campaigner, I've been an activist, and I've been an employee of the union. 
I've worked at Source for two years and I've been a mentor on Flying Start as well. I think I'm a good fit for this role because of my aims, my objectives and my passion. I'm a people person. My policies are clear and simple and I'm here to make sure that equality is spread throughout the union as well as the union. Thanks guys. Remember, to be the best, you need to have the best. Okay. Thank you, Lee. And the last candidate to speak is Claire Wilkinson. Hi. Um, one of my main points is to increase awareness and involvement. As we all know, it's really hard for students and graduates to get a job, and I think we should be leaving the university with more than just a degree, and I want to help you do this. If I'm elected, I want to help you run the campaigns that you want. I want you to continue going out and speaking to you and other students and to find out your ideas and then work with you to address them. I want to implement a reward scheme so those of you who choose to get involved get recognition for it. And I want to support clubs and societies to help them promote their campaigns, to allow other students to get involved and to benefit from the information available. As well as this, I want to promote charity events such as fireworks, skydiving and other sports events which I know have been popular in the past. There has been talk of a rag week, but why does it have to be just a week? It is an opportunity for students not only to get involved and do something different, but also to plan and organise events which would further enhance their degree. If I'm elected, I want to run these events throughout the year. It's not just about change or new ideas. It, the Kiss a Thousand Sexual Health campaign was run this year for a consecutive year, and if elected, I'd like to ensure it continues, with more events like Take Me Out running at 53 degrees throughout the year. Other campaigns I'd like to see continued is Green Week. Two years ago, we were ranked fourth place in People and Planet's Green League table. In 2011, we were eighth. Although this is still a great achievement, I think this status needs to be continued or even exceeded next year. Thanks. Thank you, Claire. Okay, we have questions for this position. Okay, the first question is, UCLan is part of the NUS widening participation scheme. With higher fees and hidden course costs, we risk losing some of the hard to reach students. Do you have plans to work on this and what are they? Well, it's a national uh, union of students campaign. Uh, it's a national campaign. Uh, I want to work closely with the NUS and next year, do some stronger campaigning because £9,000 towards your uh, course fee per annum is a lot of money if you're poor. Okay. Um, I think as a union we're here to protect all the members of the union. Um, I think that's a basic right of the or basic function of the students' union. We've got so many things in place. We've got the M&M &M mentoring, we've got course reps, um, we're going to be having a more visible SAC next year. I don't think it's going to be as easy for people to be sidelined as we maybe think. Um, as well as that, working with the NUS, um, again, like I mentioned, I want to make sure that the retention um, is there, that people know about it, that uh, tutors are actually doing things. If people are struggling, I want to push services within the union and around the university that actually help people and get them from A to B. Um, I want to continue speaking to students and finding out their opinions. I've been on student council, so I know I have experience of how to represent their views and making sure people aren't left out. Okay, thank you. The second question is, low engagement rates with students have been a popular criticism of the union. How exactly do you plan to raise awareness of the union and how are your methods better than those in the past? Okay. I think some campaigns um, were really good, but it was like the publicity and getting them out there. I know many students knew they were on when they were happening, but didn't really know how to get involved prior to that. Um, I want to work with uh, clubs and societies and I want to help promote what they've got to offer. Um, as well as that, I want to bring more people into the union by saying, by going to them and saying, we have this, we have this, showing them what's on offer, coming to you instead of you coming to find us. Yeah, I think that's a key point. I think it does come down to a communication and a marketing thing. Um, when we're looking at marketing, 
companies are why should my customer be buying something. We need to explain to our students why they should be getting involved in the different campaigns in the societies. Um, and again, using course reps. As a union, we have a direct link to the different courses. Why aren't we using them more to advertise what's going on as a union? I think we need to get out there in Freshers' Week and really promote it. This is the first two weeks when students are back or the first come to university. That is a time when to target those students. Uh, also, making, uh, more, making it more aware that there are clubs and societies uh, that they can join and have fun. Okay. Jeez. Okay, the final question is, Past performance is a good indicator of future performance. So what recent union-based campaigns have you actively participated in? Okay, Paul first. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I can't remember actually act act actively campaigning uh, here in the students you know getting involved. Uh, what I would like to say is I like the Thousand Kisses campaign. I think that was a very good one. That was, uh, Stefan did a very good job of that and I would like that to continue. I'd just like to emphasise at this point that the role of the campaigns officer is not just campaigning, it's looking after welfare and health and safety of students. So I think just bear that in mind when you're looking at who you're electing. Um, but on that front, I have been involved in a money management course at the start of the year, working with students to help them with their student loan, how to better um, handle that and make it last a bit longer than just a couple of weeks. Um, there's a few um, engagements which I've been involved in. Um, the Women's Representatives uh, Committee, where they did the A Kiss Is Not a Contract, I was involved in that. I promoted that. That's not my work, but I helped promote it. Um, there's a few that I've been involved in during, the, uh, during Freshers, beginning with um, to the Advice Centre, getting people in there, getting, people, getting it recognised. Um, I took part in the I Heart UConn survey, which was going out and speaking to students about what they thought about the union. Um, as well as that, I did attend Take Me Out, but not the promotion bit. <laughs> okay, that concludes the questions for the campaigns officer position. So can we all give them all a round of applause as they leave the stage? Could the candidates for education officer please come to the side of the stage ready to come on? Hello, welcome back. I'm here with Dave and Rennie again. Um, that was the hustings for the campaigns officer. Um, Rennie, how do you think that went? Well, I'll be honest with you. If I hear the words awareness or promote one more time, I'm going to remove my own ears. Okay, the student union has a marketing department that markets all of our activities. We're not elected to make people aware or promote this, promote that. It's becoming increasingly irritating. All of this awareness, this promotion, make it stop. <laughs> I have. <laughs> <can't laughs> it's, um, um, yeah, it's, um, it, it, it's a valid point. I think everyone is, is guilty of it. They've all talked about raising awareness, but you've got to actually take, do something with that awareness. It's all right making, you know, telling people There's about something. There's no such thing as an awareness raising campaign. But it doesn't exist. So long as you do something with it, it's, in, it's entirely pointless. So, and it, it, yeah, there's a lot of promoting and raising awareness, but I think a few people are starting to get, I mean, you got, you heard that. I think other people, and I've just looked at it on Twitter, are getting quite, fed up of hearing raising awareness because there's awareness nothing of this, awareness awareness is awareness campaigns need to have goals and aims That's okay same thing as usual candidates i will give you two minutes and i will call time after those two minutes and give you a warning at fi 15 seconds prior to the end nafisa you may start you have two minutes Hi, my name is Nafisa Ratcha and I'm standing for education officer. The reason that I'm standing is because I'm, I will give it 100% to this role. I have experience, I have been a course rep um, for my course and so I know the issues and I know the ways to tackle them. If elected, some of the things I would like to look at is um, feedback because I've been talking to the students, it's, it's something that they're very passionate about and they want to look at the way, reevaluate the way that it is given. Um, I also want to build on the communication between the education officer and course reps and SLOs and make sure that um, whoever becomes education officer has the ability to communicate with them to make sure that the issues that you have as students are taken seriously. 
And I also want to work on the make sure that e every student is treated equally from whether you're a first year to a uh, postgrad or a mature student, even though you might have different issues doesn't mean one's greater than the other, they're all the same issues and they all should be tackled. And if elected, I will be an education officer for you students and do the, uh, the best I can to make sure that your issues are getting listened to. Thank you, Nafisa. <laughs> Kayleigh, again, you have two minutes. Okay, hi everyone, I'm Kayleigh and I'm campaigning to be your education officer. Um, as a leader, I think it would, I'd be very passionate, I'm very goal-driven, um, I think I'm a natural leader, I'm very focused, um, and my influence is I'm determined, I'm dedicated, and I'm driven. Um, I have six main policies, but to begin with, I'd like to commend last year's Education Officer, Becca, for the feedback that she did, and I'd, it's something that I'd like to carry on for the next year. Um, so much work's gone into it, and I think it's important to make sure that it's something that's expanded on. As well as this, I think an open door policy for all students is something that's very key, whether it's post-grad, mature students, part-time, it has to be something where everyone's welcome to come through the door. Um, something that's also very important is communication, whether it's between communicating between students and making them available to all sources. So um, if they're not too sure where to go when they've got a problem, it needs to be clear. Um, I think it's also good to make students aware of opportunities within the systems and um, an example of that is this year I've been a course rep and it's a position that's made me very aware of what students want and what students need from their university life. Um, it's also good to keep a clear bond with the university and the other student union areas such as the advice centre, um, taking everything into account what they're going through and making everything very clear for students to understand. Also, university quality reassurance statistics need to be made a lot clearer. We're asked to take part in these surveys every year, but everyone I've spoken to is not aware of what they've actually, the actual outcome of these surveys. Um, over the past year, I've gained such a bond with students and staff, speaking to everyone, learning everyone's different um, situations and takes on the education. I think it's important to make the most of that. So, if you want to be a part of your education, I think it's important to vote for me, Kaylee, for Education Officer. Thank you, Kaylee. Uh, Kaylee. Um, next candidate, Joey, do you want to go next? Thanks. Uh, if you've managed to stay awake this long, congratulations. Um, but now is really the time to pay attention. You know, I've worked in the Advice Centre now for two years. And I'm constantly seeing the same problems come through the door, and quite frankly, I'm tired of it. For example, the current appeals procedure is completely stacked against you. The seven-day deadline means that if you get your results on a Friday, by Monday you'll only have four days in which you can appeal. This is wrong, and you deserve better. So I plan on raising this to 12 days. Similarly, when it comes to the complaints procedure, Complaints go on for months because you kind of don't currently offer a deadline in which they'll say they'll deal with them. I want to make sure that UCLAN give you a firm deadline. The course rep system at UCLAN is great. It really is fantastic, but it's stuck within the university system. This means that the education officer doesn't always get to hear your issues and your voice goes unheard. I want to move course reps under SU supervision because that means I can keep an eye on what feedback's cropping up. Now that policy itself will be very important when it comes to the UCLAN advantage. The advantage you may or may not have heard of a lot, but you should have, because it's going to be the biggest issue next year. Because those paying higher fees will be getting a lot more than you will, including guaranteed work placements. By having a fairer course rep system, I'll make sure that the advantage doesn't disadvantage you, because you deserve better. Money's an issue, you know, those pay paying higher fees will be facing higher debts, so when UCLAN gives you library fees, fees sorry, and then they, they give you fines, they give you only so long to pay them back before they block you off the system. That's wrong. That means you can't use emails, you can't use e-learn, you can't use the resources available to you. So my fellow candidates here are going to offer you cupcakes and glossy flyers. But the truth is I'm the only one here that's going to offer any real policies. So vote Joey Guy number one for education officer. Thank you, Joey. Miriam, next. Hi, everyone. My name is Miriam Parker. I'm a third year studying business and sustainable business, and I'm running for education officer because I have a passion for education and for students to achieve the best they can whilst they're at university. So I really believe that UCLan is a great place to study, 
and that continual improvement is a key way for it to stay that way. So after listening to students, I found that there's three areas that I would be keen to work on if I got into office. So the first would be equality. So I'm sure all of you are aware of the change in fees for students hoping to start university in the coming year. So if I was to be elected, I would be keen to listen carefully to second and third year students to make sure the course quality is just as good as first years. I will monitor this throughout the year. This would mean meeting with groups of second and third years and course representatives regularly to get feedback on where they think improvement is needed. So the second area is employability. So when talking to students, it is clear that this is one of the most important areas to them and so it will be a high priority for me when I get into office. So we already have some great facilities here at UCLan to help students improve their employability skills, like Futures and the Placements Unit, and it would be great to see those being used to their full potential. So I will be suggesting that Futures start a mobile information stand, making their services more visible and accessible to students. The final area that students have talked to me about is e-learning, so I'll be keen to lobby the university to improve the range of online resources for courses with a limited choice available. I want to see students at UCLan get the very best out of their degree and improving available resources would be one of my top priorities. So those are the three main areas, but of course this union is about what you want to change, so I'm sure there are other areas that people would like to see improved. I want to represent and listen to you. Your views are what matters, so get voting. Miriam Parker, number one for education. Thank you, Miriam. Next, Wade. Um, hi, I'm Wade Clifton. I'm currently a third year law student, uh, obviously here at UCLan. Next year, a lot will change for both the staff and students. As your education officer, I will work to ensure that the entire year to ensure that everyone feels comfortable with that change and to make sure that no student feels they are not being heard. I will be conducting a review on feedback while working very closely with the Learning Development Unit to have a feedback system perfected and ready for the September starters so everyone has a fair chance at receiving some feedback instead of when it comes to a 15 day limit for feedback becoming annoyed and agitated that tutors have not received any word from them. I will also be looking at whether or not the 15 day turnaround actually it works. Uh, this is to ensure that when a student hands in a piece of work they feel they'll be able to receive some feedback before their next uh, piece of work is due in and currently this is not the case and this is not acceptable. In review, I'll also be looking at the quality of feedback since I have, whilst been talking to some students, received concerns that feedback is either unhelpful, it's too short, or it doesn't even help them improve for the next piece of assignment. This is unacceptable and I will pledge that this will change. I'll also be continuing the work of the current education officer has to improve the quality of the course reps and the school reps and to make sure they're utilised to their full potential, since without them, the student's voice is not as loud and any concerns are not passed on. Again, this, is not, this cannot happen next year, especially to the second and third years. Your voice is going to be as big as ever. The university's first priority always has been and always will be the students, and this includes their course satisfaction. At the end of every, every module, a module evaluation questionnaire is filled in, and as your education officer, I will be looking at the overall view of courses and if there are any concerns about the course. I will personally address the problem and resolve the issue before students return to their studies come September. I want all the students here at UCLan to have the best three years possible, and this is only done if someone is, give, is willing to give you the best, but not only is willing, is determined to give you the best. I'm Wade Clifton, I pledge to you that I will give you the best and vote for me as Education Officer. Thank you Wade, thank you Wade, yeah, thank you, Wade. and finally Adele. Hello, my name is Adele, and I'm a third year Language and Linguistics student running for Education Officer. I have been the course rep for the last three years. If elected, there are four key things that I aim to improve. Course satisfaction, appeals and complaints, access to higher education and involvement of every, everybody, in particular the deaf community at, at UCLan. Course satisfaction and ac academic support are important to your university experience. Last year, as the other candidates have mentioned, the NSS showed that feedback had uh, a very high low, well, a low percentage. Um, together, working with these two elements, they can be used to increase overall satisfaction. In addition, I aim to create a five to seven day gap between deadlines. So for example, if you had one deadline on a Monday, there wouldn't be another one until the following week to give you enough preparation time to complete that essay. Uh, and I also aim to prevent module cancellation as this seems to be on the rise in most schools. Course this and course dissatisfaction. This I will do by working with the current course reps and school reps and pass that on to the students. If these things are improved, we will have less complaints and appeals. 
If not, I will try to resolve any in a prompt and less stressful manner, as I have been through this in my own experience. I will work with several members of the Student Council on my policies, in particular the Disabilities Rep, aiming to include all policies to everyone, in particular, like I said before, the deaf community. This is something that's not quite involved in the union at the minute. They don't have as many facilities for educational issues. They have things like interpreters that aren't used as much as they should be. Um, and finally, access to higher education, because empl employability starts at 16. Working with the campaigns officer next year, I hope to go into schools starting at age 14 and, and promote higher education. This is important because people need to know what decisions to make in future. So vote for me. I can't make you vote, but please at, at least listen to my policies. Thank you for listening. Oh my God. Brilliant. Thank you, Adele. Thank you for that. Okay, we have two questions submitted. I will then go to the floor for a third. The first question is, how will you ensure that all students are given the best opportunities and not just those paying the extra fees? Nafisa, if you want to begin, 30 seconds. Yeah. I will keep in contact with all the course reps from all, the, from all years, including second and third year, to ensure that they are satisfied with their course, to make sure that they have the same standard of learning that is given to the first years and make sure that they are, they are happy and any issues that may come from that, I will tackle them as they come then. I think that any opportunities available should be made very public within the university. It would serve all students well for them to be publicised very well, and I think it's a case of making it available to everyone as well. Um, I think if you're going to be paying higher fees, it's only fair that you get some bonuses. What my uh, new course rep system does, it allows me to get any feedback when it comes to unfair things to do with your education. So by inserting myself completely into the course rep system, that means that I'll hear any of this that happens straight away. In terms of kind of extra benefits, this is going to happen with the advantage. It's unfortunately too late to change that now. So have you, as you've heard, equality is one of my three E's. Um, so it's something that I've given quite a lot of thought to. Um, so as I said, I'd be listening carefully to second and third years to make sure that their um, level of learning wasn't any um, worse than the, the first years and yeah I'd be meeting with groups regularly just to discuss I issues and to work out if there's any improvements needed and also um, possibly look to set a benchmark for course quality so we could com compare that against the first years to make sure there was not too much difference. Um, I, mine is uh, pretty much the same as Nafisa's. Uh, what I'm planning on doing with the course rep and the school rep system is to bring all the meetings back into the union instead of into their own individual school buildings. That way I can personally oversee at least some of them, if not the majority of them, and as well as being involved in the meetings themselves, any issues that the second and third years or postgraduates do promote towards me, I can then personally have a look at and fix. My tagline on my flyers is, a vote for someone like you, a vote for everybody. This obviously shows that equality is important in my tag. Especially, like I said before, with the deaf community, what I would try to do next year is involve everybody in one. Something like trying to promote the Course Rep Academy onto just the students that maybe are in second and third years um, and try and get that as something that's incorporated into everybody's choice, not just the Course Reps. Um, and again, involving not just the people that are considered your everyday students, but the people that are disadvantaged as well. Okay, thank you, candidates. The second question is, do you think less people will be encouraged to come to UCLAM if they feel their fees are helping those who pay less? Um, I hope not. UCLAM is a fantastic university and has a lot to offer, so hopefully that won't put people off coming and seeing the wonderful facilities and things that we have to offer. I think that as long as opportunities are made very aware to everyone, because people aren't aware of a lot of the things that are going on with the university, and I think as long as standards are kept high, and as well with the rising fees, it shouldn't be much of a problem. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, currently, um, applications don't seem to be decreasing at all, so it hasn't had that much of an impact. But uh, as already said, you know, as long as the quality of the education you're getting still is as high as it currently is, then I don't see that being an issue. Yeah, although um, people applying to universities might be decreasing, I think as a university here at UCLan, if we promote um, all the positive things, so like employability, and um, what I was looking to do in terms of 
putting futures as a mobile resource, um, just telling, telling students who are possibly coming to higher education what they can get out, um, then, yeah, application results stay high. Um, personally, what I feel is needed to ensure that those application numbers don't drop is not just on the education side on it, but with, as the education officer, to work with the rest of the Student Affairs Committee to ensure that any possible issues that newcomers would have would be corrected instantaneously and that any fears they would have for paying £9,000 will decrease over time. As I said earlier, edu education and employability starts at 16. We need to get into the schools, we need to tell the, the, the students of uh, pre-16 teens that they need to make the decisions soon. This is something that needs to be, pre be promoted throughout the university to the current students. They need to know what they're going to do when they leave and UCLan will definitely not disadvantage anybody that is currently studying here uh, in any way or shape or form. Okay, thank you, candidates. If you want to give a round of applause for those answers. We will now take a third question for the floor. So can I ask for a third question from the floor? Yeah, has anyone got the mic? Hi there. Um, I'd like to say I'm glad that you're all on board with the UCLan Advantage. Um, the question I'd like to ask is what you're actually going to do about the £9,000 that students are going to be paying next year. It's all well and good saying that the advantage does give, uh, well, current students, a, oh, the advantage does allow um, upcoming students to be given some of the facilities that, well, we currently have now, but for free. But what's rather confusing me is um, why the SAC, um, is, well, what you're going to do is the SAC regarding paying £9,000. Not everyone wants free access to the gym forcefully. That's basically what the £9,000 are going to be doing. They're going to be enforcing these policies upon us. What are you going to be doing regarding the, uh, what, what I find quite humorous, the emphasis on getting pers... All right. What are you going to do about £9,000 and the UCLan advantage? Okay, Nafisa, 30 seconds. Yeah. Um, I will see how it's working and I will see if, what the issues arise once it's in once it takes place then take it from there because there isn't much we can do until it's until we know the effects of of it really obviously there's not a lot we can do about the nine thousand pounds that they're now charging however i think what we can do is take on board students opinions on how it's how they think their education should be improved or what facilities they'd like to have a, a part of opposed to what they're being forced to take a part of yeah, I mean, if you're paying the higher fees, there's nothing that says you have to use the certain facilities. Obviously, the fee rise has happened now. There's nothing we can do about it. The union put in a fantastic fight against it, but unfortunately, we lost. Um, when it comes to the advantage, obviously, we need to see how it works. These people deserve, they're paying more fees, they deserve some bonuses. So I think it would be unfair otherwise. Yeah, I think um, what we'd need to do as a union was to promote all the advantages of coming to UCLan. So um, the great employability services, the great courses, and just listen to the students and listen to what they think needs improving in that sense. Um, it's all well and good saying, right, we can do a review on it when it's been sorted. Personally, I don't agree with that. The thing with the UCLan advantage is it is starting in September, and if something does happen, students will want a choice of that. I would work closely with the people in charge of the UCLan Advantage to give the students a range of choices instead of this is what you're getting, this is what you're having, get used to it. Obviously there's nothing we can do about the, the, the £9,000 fees as somebody else said before it is a governmental issue, however um, it's something that the education officer should work with the APO and obviously the campaigns officer to maybe come into an arrangement where they could pr probably increase um, the facilities or the advantages available for current students as well as the new students because then that obviously creates the fair and equality throughout the university. Okay, thank you candidates. If I can ask for a round of applause from the floor.
And finally, can I call all presidential candidates to the stage, please? Hello and welcome back to the atrium. I'm here with uh, Rennie and Dave. Um, I've just got to give you a quick warning that there will be some flash photography on this. Um, Rennie, you were, there was a hint last time that there was maybe a lot of awareness raising and not enough actual campaigning. Um, what did you think to that last debate? Well, I was... One second, let's give Martin a round of applause. Yeah. Well, I was quite impressed with um, that, that lot of candidates. I think that there was a broad understanding of the f issues that um, UCAN's facing next year and that UCAN students are facing next year. Um, I think that we saw a lot of candidates who'd done their research, a lot of candidates um, who'd uh, not only done their research, but um, seemed to understand the kind of things that we'll need to tackle next year. So I was impressed. It's going to be a hard decision. Dave, have you anything to add to no, I'll, ju I'll just echo Rennie's uh, comments out of all the positions so far. I think the education candidates have been the best prepared, the best researched. Um, so it's going to be a really hard decision, especially as it's the most contested position as well with six people. Um, and let's just hope that the finale is as good as what we've just listened to. Okay, it's back over to Gareth for the big one. Okay, the first candidate to speak, Ed Graham Hyde. In, in the lead up and to and during my campaign, I've discovered that many students aren't sure what the SAC is or what the SU as a whole does for them. The, S the SAC is there to represent them and their voice and speak on their behalf. I believe the best way to engage these students is by meeting them on their turf and being relatable to them. It's with this in mind that if elected, I would like to set up mobile SACs around campus in various different uh, school buildings. Next year is going to be an important one for engaging these students. As mentioned by pretty much every candidate standing in the election, students are starting to pay £9,000 fees. And although I don't want to go to this, into this in detail, they could potentially be getting free gym membership, they could be getting a bursary of potentially over £1,000. The standard of living between current students and those students will be drastically different. There are also cuts to funding for some courses, and therefore some courses won't exist as of September. The university is a business, and the president of this SU needs to make sure that it carries on conducting itself in a way that is equal to all of its consumers, and that's you, the electorate. I would also like to set up an alumni office within the SU to ensure that graduates from this university are still able to access the same level of um, services here at UCLan. That would better facilitate us as a one-stop shop for all matters that students need help with. I've sat and thought about these details um, for the last couple of months. You could say I've used my head. So I'd like to ask you to use your head and vote for Ed for president. New students. Oh, there it is on. New students will face tuition fees of £9,000, something that this union campaigned against. The UCLan advantage is being introduced to give support to these students who will find they are leaving university with mortgage-style debts. While the UCLan advantage is good in principle, the implementation leaves a lot to be desired. Personal advisors could replace SLOs, bursaries which are clipped those received by current students, and free services which current students will have to pay for out of their loans they receive to help them get by. Finance should not be a barrier to participation. I am backing fairness for you and ensuring you won't be forgotten. We must be safe too. Hate crime is on the rise and we must fight it, reverse this trend and beat it for good. The union is now a hate crime reporting centre, a positive step, but we must transform the union into a community which will listen, support and tackle this shocking issue together, turning solitude into unity, threat into opportunity and fear into strength. I'm backing a safe, secure and supportive campus for all students. We must also support students who want to use resources such as our multi-faith centre. Currently students are locked out for 15 hours a day. Students should be able to access these services when they need to, not when the university wants them to. I'm backing more access and more campaign for a 24-hour keycard system. Our postgrads and partner college students are almost being, also being forgotten about. I know how hard it is to get the support of, as a postgrad and the problems facing those studying outside this campus. So I'm backing our forgotten students and ensuring you won't be forgotten too. I'm backing students who don't feel safe on our campuses. And I'm backing a union that's fit for purpose 
and that is driven forward at every opportunity by experienced, passionate and strong leadership. If you back them too, then back Bradshaw to be your next SU president. Thank you. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Mark and I'm uh, campaigning to be elected as your SU president. Um, as you all know, the coalition government has introduced radical changes to the higher education system for the next academic year, um, the most controversial of which, as you all know again, being the raised cap on tuition fees. Um, UCLan has announced that the new full-time graduates starting in September will pay £9,000, whilst continuing students will pay just under £3,500. Your SU needs a president who will hold the university to their promise in that your future is their commitment by providing you with the advantage you need to thrive in the career of your choice through quality teaching, first-class facilities, support and links to researchers and employers. It's time to work with the university to deliver its student experience but to still hold it accountable in its failings. I intend to do this by ensuring that the UCLan advantage, as everybody has mentioned, does not see continuing undergraduates are forgotten about and that every student, regardless of the level of tuition fees that they pay, are given access to the same opportunities. By ensuring that students know who their course reps are, know who their school reps are, and know how to contact them. By ensuring that mature students, part-time students, commuting students, and postgraduate students are fairly represented. By ensuring that students that study at one of the UCLan's partner institutions are fairly represented. And by improving the quality and the standard of academic feedback. Your Students Union is a democracy. It's an organisation that's open and responsive to student-led change. If you agree that your SU needs passionate and confident voices to ensure that changes in higher education are student-centred and that your Student Affairs Committee are collectively responsible for promoting and defending the rights of students, then please vote Mark Bickley as your Students Union President and help UCLan SU step up to the mark. Thank you. Okay, so don't worry, we're, we're nearly finished now. Okay, so my name's Lauren Ashcroft, if you don't know me. Okay, I believe equality amongst stu students is fundamental. If elected, I will ensure that when the 9K students arrive, we will not be forgotten about. And if they get incentives and benefits, so will we. I believe that everyone has a right to education. Due to UConn's new fees, this may prevent many people from pursuing their dreams and um, careers. Therefore, I want to make more bursaries and scholarships available. I will continue to fight against rising fees. Although we cannot decrease the fees, I will take a strong stance and I will be adamant that the money is put to good use, spent on us. If elected, I would like to improve resources and facilities have students' presence on interview panels. After all, we are paying their wages. <laughs> to me, everyone is equally important and should be recognised and have a voice. Vote Lauren Ashcroft, number one for president, and I will ensure you can let us have our way and it can be the best, and it will be the best that it can be. Thank you. Okay, thank you, candidates. We will have four questions. I've been asked, can I ask James Hodgson to come to the stage and submit a fourth question? Um, Steph, can you, Randy, can you take it? Do you want to, okay, you want to ask it at the end, that's fine. Okay. All right, so the first question, do you think having a strong affiliation with a political society will prevent you from representing all student views. Okay, Ed first. Um, I personally don't uh, think that it will stop you from being able to represent student views. I think if you have a member of parliament um, in this area, for example, that's their job to represent all of the views of the people in their constituency. I personally, um, I'm, a Labour, I'm a Labour supporter. I'm not gonna massively go on that, on that trend. Um, but no, in, in summary, I don't think it will stop you from being able to represent students. Um, I'm going to sound like I'm on a 
thingy, but I absolutely agree with Ed. I don't think I'm the chair of UConn Labour Students. I set it up this year, and but I don't think that means that I'll only represent people who are Labour supporters. I'm here to represent the entire student body, no matter what their political affi affiliation. Um, and then that's the job as a sabbatical officer. You represent everyone, not just the students who voted for you. Well, it's definitely important for the for the students union to have affiliations with local politics. But um, I agree with the other two that the, the, having an affiliation with a particular party is not going to um, prevent other students from from airing their views off or having their views listened to. Like I said, the SU is a democracy, and we'll strive to listen to everybody and to take everybody's views on board. I personally don't have a political preference, but I'm open-minded, and um, I will take on board anything that anybody has to say. Number four. <laughs> so I agree basically with what they've said. Um, I don't think it is important, really. It's down to the students, although um, um, help from you know political um, things is good. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, the current president has supported LGBT in various campaigns. How are you going to support them and other liberation groups? Starting with Lauren. Okay, so basically we need to get more awareness for one because I don't know how much awareness there is about it already. So with more awareness about this and also maybe getting course reps involved like to give feedback to the students and the classes so then more people are aware. Uh, personally, at the moment, I think there's a massive divide between the students' union and the university. I don't know how many people saw it, but about 40 minutes ago, the uh, the the university um, updated their Facebook status saying something about um, a Channel 4 program um, when the SU elections question time is going on at the moment, which is sort of the, one of the biggest things for um, students at the moment. So I think by um, increasing awareness through the university, not just the SU, um, will definitely help by supporting not just the LBGT but um, all UCAN um, societies. Um, liberation is at the heart of everything that I do. I've been on the LGBT committee a couple of years ago. I've been to an um, NUS Disabled Students Conference. I was on their national committee. But I also believe it's really important that these groups are. Um, autonomous and they decide their own policy and decide what they want to do and our job is to support not to dictate and that's what I will do as president support these groups in what they want to do and making sure that their campaigns and their ideas get out to students yeah I just like to just suggest the same thing really if I'm voted in then I need to represent all students um, so for example I don't know the ins and outs of every lifestyle that you could choose to live for example I'm not a woman some of you may think I am, that's fine, but I don't know what it is to be a woman. But there's nothing stopping me working with the women's rep and the council, working with other women within the university to ensure that we're campaigning and we're listening to them and doing what they want us to do as an SAC. Okay, thank you very much. What union-based political activity have you been actively involved in and contributed to? Okay, starting at this end. Ed. Okay, well, I started off uh, my first and second year just uh, working in the Christian Union, uh, the society I'm majorly affiliated with. I then came into being a forum leader. I was then um, part of Games and Guild that happened that Ben Latham mentioned earlier. Um, and I've been working in the Students Union um, helping support societies as the society support worker. So I have a lot of experience mainly from that background within the SU. Um, politically within the union, um, this year when I started my PhD and I got elected to student council in the recent by-election, I, I set up what is now UConn's only political society, so that shows I'm very politically active. I've also, when I was an undergrad, been the campaigns officer at the union and sat on council for a number of years. So my political involvement with the U union goes back to the very first day of my undergrad degree and I'm still involved now.
Um, I deliberately left out of my speech uh, experience that I've had in, in the past. I'm not going to lie, I've never had any political experience with the SU, but I could have gone on about how I've worked in source for two years. It's my fourth year at UCLan. I'm uh, a course rep. There isn't a lecturer on my course who doesn't know who I am because I'm constantly knocking on the door, bringing up issues that students have raised. Um, but I think it's time to stop focusing on the past and, and focus on the future. There's nothing better than a fresh pair of eyes, and I think that um, the university and the SU needs um, a, a fresh start. Okay, so I'm new to the student union. I only came across it this year. I wasn't really aware about what facilities the union had. I'm the current president of the International Society. I set this up in September. This society has already promoted integration among nationalities, cultures, and language exchange. Also, I've been course rep for three years, so therefore I'm used to fighting and defending for our rights and ensuring that we get the best out of UCLan. Okay. okay, question from the floor. Hi there, um, I'd just like to ask the presidential candidates how they're going to maintain impartiality, especially considering that they have their own affiliations, i.e. Lee Bradshaw with the Labour Society, 